A word to the wise. We are an explicit podcast tackling content with adult themes as well as entering spoiler territory if you aren't caught up with us. That point this week would be through chapter 17, up until, but not including, the first interlude of Jade City, the first installment of the Greenbone Saga by Fonda Lee. Hey there, this is Cross. And I'm PJ. I'm Ben. What up? I'm Aaron. And I am Thomas. And we are Words and Whiskey, a podcast for veteran and novice readers alike. We tackle fiction novels and love to talk about what we're drinking. You should think of us as your intoxicating weekly book club. Yeah, we didn't really go over that ahead of time. (laughs) Yeah, we didn't. We didn't tell you, but you know. (laughs) Great job. I was intuitive. My name was in the the thing. I think I I should say it. (laughs) Ben. (laughs) We talked about it before you guys got here. (laughs) <laughs> very useful <laughs> super excited for today's episode today's episode we're going to be chatting about chapters 10 through 17 but before we get too much further let's talk about our featured cocktail this week i'm doing the featured cocktail i was responsible pj was traveling but it's not ben and aaron's time yet it's not thomas's time yet and i just had a crazy birthday weekend and i realized that i had no citrus in my house and so what are we getting? We've got an old fashioned. I don't have anything <laughs> crazy to say about an old fashioned classic ratio. Make sure you're using Astora bitters, you know, I don't, I don't know, Woodford Reserve. It's really tasty. Do you have an orange peel? Uh, I don't because I don't have any citrus. Mm, okay. <laughs> so, it's so also sans orange peel. Since this is a new series with a potentially new set of people listening, and this is the one time we're deep diving into a single cocktail, Crossland, will you give us the recipe for an old fashioned? Oh, yeah. An old fashioned is a cocktail that I have gotten to a point of where I just know what it is based on pouring instincts. So I'm going to pull up a recipe because I am past that point now. So. Generally speaking, it's two ounces of whiskey. So all of this is done inside of the actual glass vessel that you're going to be making it in. So it's served in glass. So what you're doing is you're going to be pouring two ounces of whiskey, generally bourbon, whatever you're looking for, though. You're going to follow that up with a half ounce of sugar and then two dashes of Angostura stirred, plop in an ice cube. Let that all kind of incorporate lovely. Generally take an orange peel and spray it over top, giving that a nice squeeze and serve. Delicioso. It's to taste, though. You know, that's there's right. a reason it's a classic. You like yeah. old fashioned? Yeah, hell yeah, brother. <laughs> <laughs> we need to make a, a drink <laughs> called Golden Jade. Ooh. See, I have so many ideas that I've already written down. I hadn't written that one down, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna take it down. <laughs> but. I had so many ideas written down and I was just disappointed when I went to my fridge after this weekend and everyone drank everything citrus. And I was like, oh, they, they weren't even here. PJ was the only one who was here for a solid <laughs> PJ drank couple everything. of hours. <laughs> yeah. I was Classic there. PJ. We got, we got there at what? Midnight. And then I left at three. We got here at, 11 11 and then we watched three episodes of Vox Machina and then you left at three (laughs) (laughs) sounds like a good time I was was a good time fucking tired at my show the next day (laughs) (laughs) and then I walked 11 miles in a convention hall wow wow good job brutal yeah, that was tough. Yeah. Yesterday I didn't do shit. So by comparison let's get a rundown of what everyone else is doing though what's everyone else drinking real quick what we got? Surprise, Ben I and I are drinking beer. Woo! We've got Casey <laughs> Beer Co. Hefeweizen. Is that what we had last week? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I think it's what you had last time. You had beer moses last time. Beer moses. Hell yeah, yeah brother. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a, a local shop here. Casey Beer Co. Local brewery. Beer is spelled B I E R. Around the Midwest. So you might look around for them. Red label. Very good. Very good. PJ, how about you? Right now I have a beer called Secret Lovers from New Anthem and Wilmington Brewing Company. And if you have been listening to the show for a while, you'll know that that is, those are two breweries that are frequently featured on the show, not by me, but I went and visited Crossland and left with four, four packs of beer. (laughs) Is that anime characters on the front? 
I think it's the Brewers drawn in a very oh from cartoonish. far away it looked kind of like um, more cartoon style. It looked almost like Dragon Ball Z from afar. <laughs> it does kind oh, of. No, no, no. It was probably cooler from afar. I'm but yes, thank you. But also, I've been drinking it for like forty-five minutes, so I might go get a cold a one. one. <laughs> yeah, I have a cold one. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas, what are you drinking tonight? So I don't like beer, unfortunately. So I have Thomas, get out of here. I have <laughs> mixed drink, a little bit of rum that will remain na- nameless, no free ads. Tran pineapple and a lime. <laughs> All right, sounds tropical, yeah. beachy, it's an ocean spray. Crying oh, pineapple or crying no free though, ads. Right? Fuck. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, thanks so much. That was awesome. I'm super excited. Can't wait to do one of these. I forgot to tell you guys to pour a shot for the Devil's Cup, but we're we're past that point. So here we are. Now we're here. Before we talk about the chapters, though, PJ, Ben, Aaron, what did you think of this week's reading? How'd you feel about week two? I like this week. Are we in? I like this a lot better. I'm I'm more in now. Both feet. Yeah. I've jumped in. Totally. Ten toes down. I was I was already in and I'm deeper in. We're getting more more of the like adversarial political like interactions as opposed to the like internal ones, which I also love, but like these sort of chess moves between the two clans being really sort of out in the open is really, really fun. I would agree. I'm 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 not 10 toes down yet but i am i'm getting there i would say i'm still trying to figure out and this is just because of the current role that i'm in on this podcast but i'm just trying to figure out who i'm supposed to be following still and like who i'm i'm cheering for so i think that personally i'm decided on lawn and that's who i'm gonna go that's be my guy my girl i'm i'm all in on i madashi oh wow Mm. I'm a Mata ma'am. Mata ma'am. Wow. <laughs> Mata ma'am. <laughs> I like a powerful woman. I like her ponytail, no makeup. I'm into that. She did seem like a formidable foe. Hell yeah. So we're we're foes because we're both the pillars. Opposite pillars. Pillar v. Pillar. Classic us. <laughs> Fuck you, Ben. <laughs> oh, you like Lon? I'm going to like Madashi. <laughs> <laughs> Even though Andy wasn't really featured as heavily this week, I still think he's who I'm going to gravitate towards. Cool. Yep. All right. Love that. I With- too. I have to say that oh, yeah. she's probably like, yeah, she's really growing on me the fastest. I'm I'm interested to see her storyline as well. Jay definitely got the least screen time of last week comparatively. And so it's really great to really kind of see that brought to the forefront yeah. this week throughout the throughout the pages. So I think I'll like her more when she stops pretending that she's not going to be involved in clan business. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just move into the part where you are involved. <laughs> <laughs> it does seem Give like that's all of going your to happen. Yeah. You know, yeah. put your Jade back on. Let's get to it. Yeah. <laughs> That feels like it's going to be a moment at some point. She puts the jade on. All right. Love it. All right. With that, let's get into these chapters. We start with chapter 10, The Mountain House. After being abducted from the boat day celebration, and didn't find himself in the ha- in the house of the Mountain Clan under the auspices of Gaunt Ash and Ait Mata. After an exchange of tea, Ait extends the offer to have Andin join the Mountain Clan to lead their SN1 or Shine production in Egaton. What do we... Is it, I, I just is like, it U- this... Ugaton? Ugaton? E- Egaton? E- Egaton. Egaton. Yeah. So this is a Y. Yeah, it's Egoton. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was really cool to see, you know, the yin and yang. We, we've already been at, what's Lon's house called? The, no Peak. The No Peak. Isn't the house called something? The, the, the estate. estate. The, yeah. yeah. So we've seen the call estate and we've been there a little bit. So it was cool to get to see the mountain. And yes. I, and then they introduced this whole concept. Or not introduce it. We kind of heard about Shine previously, but... They shine some more light on it. And then we're like, oh shit, the mountain's up to stuff. They've got all kinds of irons in the fire and they're causing all kinds of trouble, playing kinds of all kinds of games. And I think then you can kind of start seeing, like PJ said, a little more of the conflict 
that seems like it's going to arise starts to come to the forefront a little bit more th- now than it was in those first nine chapters. I, I liked this scene, especially with the exchange of tea, how you get a lot more of the sort of cultural pleasantries and expectations around these like these meetings of who gets offered tea first and what does that mean about their station all kinds of stuff like that. I don't know. It, it made it feel pretty rich. Maybe it was a little bit ham-fisted in describing it, but I'm fine with it. Yeah, the tea was cool. Yeah. For, the tea was cool. For school, I went to China and we like went into a tea shop and like paid to have the traditional tea served and they like heat up your cup before they pour the tea in and it kind of reminded me of like tea is like a symbolic you know, you're sharing a glass together you're like on the same level so you know it was more than just are you thirsty yeah little andon oh yeah i i love the tea scene and i also love it because it does pre- present ait mata to us finally is this incredibly like you said at the top Aaron, incredibly intimidating woman and just sort of this quiet power about her this like reserved energy and it's so interesting to have that with gaunt ash in the room as well of whom is this incredibly imposing figure and really like She's nothing physically to remark upon necessarily in terms of like being physically intimidating, but obviously commands the respect of everyone around her. And as we've heard the stories of how she rose to power to begin with, just murders everyone. And she's just like, <laughs> I want to have her armbands. Those seem cool. Yeah, just absolutely mm-hmm. decked out in jade. It's pretty tight. It's like a razor wrapped around her arm. I thought the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> the way that they wear all of these things as presentational in addition to them being weapons is always just like nice, mm-hmm. nice touch. Really incorporating that in. As mentioned, though, obviously, we have the touch of the conversation around Shine. And I would love to get your guys ideas on where the story is proceeding with sort of the Shine, the SN1 trade and production and where your brain goes with what the fuck the mountain's up to. Can we just like confirm exactly what shine is? So it like allows people that don't have jade resistance to use jade. Is that am I understanding that? It's correctly? like it's like a condom for jade. For jade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I like that. That's a that's a very the, simple. The explanation. description right now is still loosey goosey, so I don't want to okay. I don't want to step directly into defining it a little bit. Okay. But so far as we are aware. What Shine is capable of doing is allowing non Jade users to use Jade. Okay. Um, so I do, I do have a, to what degree we don't like, really have. You know, it means like, for instance, Barrow, who could had Kekanese in him, he can use Jade, but not like an Aspenian who has no reaction to Jade. So it's without getting the it's it's resisting the sort of some of the negative things, and that's about all that we get is that it's. You're not going to go immediately crazy like Barrow is with the itches kind of mm-hmm. from his perspective and that sort of hunger that he has. But then if, so that's, if that's about the description that we get, if it was so, what, what race is Sampa? Okay. So it wouldn't allow an Abuke to use Jade because they can't. Correct. Okay. So far as we know. So far as we know. Yeah. It makes so, me curious. Just like what <laughs> the mountain clan is up to. Like, I don't really get other than like money like what their motivation is to be like helping all these other people use Jade and trying to, it seems like they're and this is kind of, I guess getting into later chapters, but it seems like they're trying to control more of the Jade production. And then they're also trying to allow for more shine production. So more people can use Jade. So it's like, is this just a money play or, or power. what power or control? Yeah. I, th- I think it's, all of the above. What's the end game? I think the end game is allowing these outsiders to use Jade with the caveat of when the time comes, you're going to help us take over the rest of like our territory. Mm. Take over. Be the only clan left. But it just seems like they would then don't don't they want to be special? Like <laughs> if I had this special Jade power. Well, they still I would control want... the entire jade trade. <laughs> That's true. I guess you're right. If they've got control of the of the production of jade, then that makes more sense to me now. Okay. Yeah. Um, Ben, what you just touched on though, that's what Andon presses Ait about. About mm-hmm. like, isn't it 
a special Cantonese thing, why would we offer this to foreigners? Right. Mm -hmm. That's what I I mean. Like, if I was a special jade person, let me tell you what. (laughs) You'd be like Lon. (laughs) So surprising. (laughs) I don't know if I would be trying to let everybody else in my special jade. You know, I don't know. I want to be special. Yeah. Ben, if you were a special jade person, you'd be moot <laughs> from the, the middle of this book with the just the one stud on the tongue. Just wow. Wow. That was, that was Moot's a spy. Ben's not a spy. I don't know. Is he a good spy? <laughs> we didn't can, can clarify any of that. Yeah, I, I just love this chapter and the way that it builds Aimata as a character and it begins to kind of plant these seeds that obviously are going to pay off throughout the rest of this, but... I, I also love how there's a lot of guilt that's explored through Andin surrounding his parents in this chapter as well. It's it's kind of, in some ways, in the previous section, it was used as kind of a manipulation tool to kind of discuss. But here, you can still feel that kind of wrenching guilt in this idea of, like, going too far and what, like, the calls have given him up until this point and a lot of that. It gives Andin an interesting painting over top of him. And the fact that, like, even he... He considers the fact of like throwing the tea in her face for a moment. <laughs> and I, when I reread that, I was like, that's happening. No, that doesn't happen. And then had kind of that flash of like, God damn it. I wish he would have done that. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I think one interesting thing that we haven't touched on yet, this chapter is the concept of whispering of a name. Ooh. Mm. That's important. Foreshadowing. We begin and end with a whispering. Of <laughs> oh a name my gosh. This week. As though that was planned, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. Mada, to do something like Mada that. Uh, really kills everyone, including her own adoptive brother. So that's pretty legit. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> and he's just minding his own business, hanging out with hookers, gambling, not going to take over. And she's like, yeah, you're dead. It's the way of the road. Yeah she goes yeah am i the only one who likes mata (laughs) oh no i love i love mata mata is incredible i don't know about the other two though yeah (laughs) well you you can say you like someone (laughs) (laughs) i like all of them okay i also like all of them except moot moot sucks yeah doro but or doru but we'll get there there. round face Full round face. Yeah, Doru, nobody likes. Nobody likes Not after this yeah, group of chapters. Hate Doru. Did you guys have any thoughts on I, the other two fuckers? I mean, people, podcast goers, friends. <laughs> I, the, her trail to becoming the pillar. Oh, it's, I mean, it's, it's brutal and seems to be entirely like a surprise, but you can tell it's commanded respect. You can tell it's set herself up for this. Like she seems to be more well respected than Lon is on her side of things, but maybe that's just the little bit of exposure we have to her so far. Yeah, she definitely seems like she has a better hold on her clan. And then if you think about her, how ruthless she is, plus gaunt, and like he seems like he's just an efficient ass killer. No sleeves. Like the two of them together. Tough. That's true. Neither <laughs> of them scary. Wear sleeves. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing to hide. One I think that jade, one except for everything else. That's interesting. I think that our call crew is really gonna have to nut up here if we're gonna, <laughs> you know, take on the mountain clan at this point. <laughs> we have to figure some shit out on the call family side. Agreed. <laughs> Calling it right now, they're gonna nut up as, as Ben said, and they're just gonna take out the mountain in the next section, and then they're gonna have no conflicts. We're gonna need a really no conflicts. I think they're gonna need a really inspiring halftime speech at some point in this book to bring the team together. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. He's still on football. We're gonna move to relay ball real quick, right in the middle of the book. There's gonna be like a little, you know, a full part that's dedicated to that game and what that sport looks like. Super that's excited. Really? Oh, not, sorry, I spoiled what, that for you. Oh, that's you what that? Jade War is about. It's a metaphor. It's a sports metaphor. <laughs> it's a sports metaphor. <laughs> this whole book is about sports. <laughs> Red Rising was about <laughs> bakers, right? And then now this is about Yes. Sports. <laughs> yep. Exactly. 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 <laughs> that brings us to Go ahead, Thomas. Chapter 11, where the pillar stands. Andin is returned to No Peak and awaiting Hilo, who takes him to Lon at the weatherman's office. After, de- after debriefing Lon 
on Ike in the Mountains' move into the shine business, and in his return to Kyle Dusharan Academy while the Pillar of No Peach, his weatherman, and his horn chew over Ike's plans and what they could mean. So, any Pen. immediate takeaways? Let's just all say Andy did a great job. He did do a great job. did pretty well. I was proud of him. Yeah. He kept his head. He didn't throw tea in anyone's face. Sorry, Cross. I mean, like, you want that, but you understand why he didn't do it, you know? Like, and he, like, gets the message to Juan while, like, not talking to Hilo. He's like, she wanted you to receive the message. Like, everyone's really reading all the undertones very clearly. It probably helps to have perception. Mm-hmm. There's also the note right when he gets dropped off of him, like, worried about the Mountain Clan driver and, like, being very deliberately very, very fast about closing the door after he gets out so they don't have the opportunity to, like, jump him. Yeah, he, he's not trying to get revenge or... And he's thinking about the clan as a whole, not about, like, fuck that driver and Mountain, let's go kill them all because they kidnapped me. And to a certain extent, he still has a decision to make. Like, he he's still potentially... He's been... He's been given a choice that he hasn't officially made yet one way or another. But it wasn't really a choice because he even said it's not a choice because then, you know, obviously no peak would have to murder him. (laughs) 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 Yeah. It was a quote unquote choice. But that's how I saw it. Immediately like sharing that information and letting the driver get killed. Then then mountains on his head, you know, like he's kind of, he has to act with decorum to both sides at this point without like, so he doesn't just have a, a fucking target on him. Yeah. Don't want to start a Jade war, you know, mm. Mm. or is, has it already started? <laughs> is it perhaps begun? <laughs> That's a different book. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It can't be here. I, I'm totally with you. I think that one of the things that I really enjoy the most about the entirety of Andin's perspective that we're in for the segment here is how he approaches this and then also comparing the brothers' reactions to Andin's survival, right? So, like, Lon is, like, very, like, kind of grabbing the shoulder. Like, Hilo's like, fuck them, fuck them, fuck them, grabs the shoulder, shakes him, and he's like, are you okay? And Lon, meanwhile, is very like, okay, obviously you're fine. You made it here. I never believed that they were going to hurt you give me the information and plays it much. I just love, I love that dueling perspective between the two. I'd be fascinated to know if Shay were in the room, how she would react as well to the same information scene. I feel like she'd be more like, I don't know. Yeah, I would agree. She and Hilo seem to be opposites, but then Doru is another reaction as well. Mm -hmm. Fuck Doru. Fucking Doru. (laughs) (laughs) I knew he was up to no good. <laughs> He's such a Pliny. Or Pliny <laughs> he really is. You know? for, for some reason, I thought all the Doru shit came out in like three weeks from now. And I was we were playing really coy last week. And I was like, oh, no, it's this week. Never mind. What the fuck <laughs> I am I thinking? Was for some reason. Yeah, <laughs> me too. I was like, I thought that that was hiding for a long time. Anyway, <laughs> no, they outed him as a dirtbag. Yeah. Pedophile. Immediately. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Garbage. Great. <laughs> we'll, um, we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> Stick to this chapter. There's a couple interesting Doru things as well, as Aaron alluded to. He has a notable and interesting reaction to the Mountain's plans for and it basically offering up him up as a hostage. Anything else? And he's yeah, like, that's war, what we used right? to do in the old times. I mean, this is this is basically the sort of ward situation that the Starks and Game of Thrones, yeah. Greyjoys. What's it, Lannisters? What's no, it's the Starks no. and the Greyjoys. Leon. Or no, Theon. Not Leon. Theon. Theon Greyjoy. Oh, poor Theon. Like that's that's essentially what this situation is, right? Like yeah. send him there to ensure that like they would need a ward back there, right? Yeah. Yeah, who's gonna be the mountain ward? I almost said Gronk, but that's from that's from the Emperor's New Crew. Gronk? Ah, oh, fuck! <laughs> it's, it's Gronk. Awesome. I think you're still thinking of the Super Bowl. Oh, <laughs> fuck that Gronk! He's annoying. Different Gronk. Different Gronk. Anyways, I digress. 
Hashtag not my Gronk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Doru, once again, just feels like he's constantly scheme- actually scheming against the Call family like most of the time and like kind of doing it outwardly. He's very and cold, calculating. Don't know how we have not canned this man yet, but I hope we're Call Sen likes soon. him. I know, but like, why does Call Sen like him? What's up with that? Maybe he knows something. Yeah, like well, they were probably up to some s- terrible shit together, and Dory is like the only guy who knows about it. So he's like, let's just gotta kill keep him. Close. Let's just kill him. He's a good man. Got to keep him close because if he. Sounds like we've got a conspiracy corner. <laughs> this might be. <laughs> Everybody to the corner. Go. I'm just saying, like, he seems to be like, every time he comes up with a suggestion, it's like, whose side are you on, dude? <laughs> yeah. So he, so he was like fully for like, yeah, let's send in and let's get in. It's good business. And then obviously we haven't talked about it yet, but we start seeing some weird stuff in the books that Doru didn't catch or maybe didn't report on yeah this was not a good set of chapters for him tough look it's looking yeah. all my friends hate doru you yeah. know fork for doru the weatherman i'm just gonna work in all the puns this week oh my god <laughs> all the puns <laughs> <You're> just, <laughs> pun is fuck today that's good it's surprising that you're not a dad <laughs> is he a dad <laughs> <laughs> So they do, Doru, Lon, and Hila obviously are getting into this huge conversation about what to do in the moment and sort of the decisions that they make. And obviously Doru's kind of take on things is taken into consideration, but mostly shut down by the end of the section. And there's that bitter final word that he has as he brings it back up to Lon being like, are you sure that like he's bringing up the idea of like going to call Sennington and what'd you guys make of Lon's reaction? I was so proud of him. I was He's like, you're talking to call sent i was like i did a little air fist pump on that one when when he laid that line down i was like fuck yeah man be the pillar and i I think he probably could have i go back and forth on it like he could have been more clear like call sennington doesn't matter anymore but to to kind of evoke him as the successor and embodying the embodiment of his grandfather I think worked well, but yeah, I, I I almost would have wished we would have seen him try to separate himself from it more and assert himself as the leader and an individual as opposed to like, no, I'm embodying his position. You know, does that make sense? Is that like articulate enough? <laughs> like instead of saying this is call sent being like, no, I'm in charge. I'm call on. Call on. I'm I'm the pillar. Call lunch in so, one. How dare you disrespect his just as a call lunch. point of clarity. He says I you are talking to call Jen, not call Sen. Yeah. Because Jen is like the Oh, does yeah, he? Jen is the term of respect okay. because normally Doru calls him Lansa, which is like nephew or like his father calls him Lansa Kid, later. Boy. Okay. Never mind. Totally, totally I listened to it a bunch of times on audiobook today while I was walking around the, the convention mm-hmm. floor. And that didn't didn't dirtic or didn't enunciate well enough. So there is like a second language that you start to pick up on as you absorb more and more of this that I, I really adore. And that's those prefixes, suffixes are are huge mm. for terms of respect, especially. And there's like you get more with the the slain nature of it, how especially in like it stuck out to me having read it a bunch of times, how shifty it is in the first chapter even. It's like it's respect, familiarity with the people. There's all these layers to it that are really fascinating. Yeah, this might be one to do more than one reading pass on every week. Yeah, as as recommended, my my thought process with this is like, I think the first three weeks of this, like you have to make sure that at a minimum you're reading it once or twice just to get some of those like material things. And then I listened to the rest of it for most of the series outside of like I would pop up in my book to like check names or like when something got really exciting, I'd like... <laughs> fucking he was too slow so i had to go <laughs> <laughs> i yeah i definitely recommend reading it i'm not i don't dislike the mm-hmm. narrator he's, i'm just not like a big fan of his so i sure. i would recommend reading as much as you can at least and then audio as the second supplement mm-hmm. that's what i'm doing and i found i like the narrator a lot more if i put it on one point 
to speed. I do 1.3. Exactly. Yeah. This is where I first sped up an audiobook mm-hmm. for the first time. <laughs> 1.2. 1.2 <laughs> yeah. for the first time. 1.3 for the second time. See, I sped up my voice. Yeah. Oh. See, I sped up my voice. <laughs> Method for all of you, if I'm listening to this at 2x speed, you are already fucked because I'm talking at 2x, so this is 4x now. <laughs> what are you doing? This is so fast. I'll talk. That's true. Uh, slow. Cool. But back <laughs> back to the book, I thought Lan, Lawn did it. In Kansas, we say Lan did a great <laughs> job. My name is Crossland, so Cross I get land. it. Like, he really needs to nut up and make these lines more and like be like i'm in charge because if he has internal strife there's no way mata isn't gonna fuck him up that's true damn right sister <laughs> mata's mata's gonna prey on that she already is by that. being like i can't talk to you unless you put hilo in his place she's already right. like trying to put him in his place yeah they're scheming <laughs> out there in the mountain just big time they've been up to shit hell yeah do you think you said out there, and I just have to clarify, it's up there, because they're <laughs> oh, yeah. up. Sorry, up there. No peak would be out there. No, I'm just <laughs> bullshitting. I didn't, I didn't get the bit until it was way too late, so, you know. Ben and Aaron, would you say Andy Reid or the Mountain have more complex schemes? Oh, definitely Andy. Andy. We're not biased. And then it's like Heisenberg slash Walter White. Okay. And then it's the Mountain clan, as far as people that All are... Right. In the lab, cooking up, and then crazy schemes, plenty, and then No Peak is like way down here. <laughs> wow, top guys. No, no peak, peak, no schemes. You know, No Peak has no. They're like, yeah, they're not even up to shit. Like in this set of chapters, they finally get up to some shit. Hilo gets up to a little bit of shit. It's like driving across Kansas. You can see the cop like a mile ahead of you, so you can slow down. <laughs> Like, that's no peak. You can see (laughs) the scheme, and you're like, I guess I'll bump down on my cruise control here so I don't get a ticket. Great call. Great call. Chapter 12, A Man Named Moot. We return to Barrow, damaged and deformed from his encounter with the calls and makes, and we meet up with a man named Moot, who hires Barrow to work for him and thusly for the mountain. This is a brisk chapter. Not, Not a ton to say outside of the fact that Barrow's back. We meet Moot. We get this perception of what seems to be the hunger for the itches. What'd you What'd you think? I just want to say I told you so. I knew <laughs> Barrow would be back on this one. I knew it. And what a dick! He's like tripping <laughs> Sampa, slashing his tires. Him and his round face. Sa- Sampa <laughs> has the round face. <laughs> Sa- yeah, Sampa and his round Leave face. Leave him too. alone. <laughs> And lost his job because he got his tires slashed and couldn't make his delivery. Like what a I dick! So bad for Barrow Santa is Santa. not a nice person. <laughs> Sounds like the bike no, messengers he's... need to unionize. Guy misses one day, he's fired. <laughs> <laughs> True. He needs no, a no. he needs a rent a bike. Barrow's definitely not a nice boy. He's an angry young man. He's a dick. I feel like he was like. I'm sure it could be argued that the itches are attributing to this a little bit, but I think. I'm willing to bet he was always kind of a dick. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of incel energy off of Barrow. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes and seeks out Moot just so he can like fuck with No Peak because he, now he limps and isn't handsome anymore. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. that's what was his problem. His problem was <laughs> <laughs> now I'm not pretty enough. <laughs> no, man. It's all attitude. He just, yeah, I agree with Aaron. I think he's just going to pop up at a terrible time here and just really cause some problems. It was a mistake to not kill that kid. We stand for killing last time. <laughs> kids. <laughs> killing children. <laughs> I stood really hard we on We talked the, a lot about not yeah, killing kids. I stood really hard on the platform of not killing kids last week. but Such now, a nice guy. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> mixed bag i don't know children who knows <laughs> maybe we don't want this kid it. around if it's a bad kid and here's the question do they not they don't have jail like oh, yeah, there was no other uh, there was no other option besides killing him or not killing him there was no like turn like, him into the authorities yeah I think just because hey, it was like clan kid, business half to death <laughs> i think they <laughs> just decided yeah i think they just decided to be like it's clan shit and so they're like, we'll take care of it because it happened at Don't our lantern government. man's 
house or I mean his restaurant and it seems like they're just like we're kind of the enforcers on the block so he's not going to fuck with us or is he but now he's going to fuck with Should've them. Should have thrown him right off the dots. <laughs> My guy is definitely going to fuck yeah. with them. Also, shortest chapter in the book, right? Thus far. <laughs> I, all the interludes are about about this length, so there, there are a couple that are similar. But yes, definitely the shortest chapter. Moot, I guess, is maybe the only other thing to talk about outside of Barrow. This sort of self-made man of whom is, a, as we mentioned earlier in the kind of way back, the a spy on one side and kind of a loyal man on the other. What would you guys make of, of moot? Well, his name is spelled M U D T. So, I mean, it kind of looks like immediately you're like mud and that kind of just like, I don't know, informs his character. I feel like he's very muddy. He's dirty. Dirty. Yeah. He's just like clearly got his hands into all kinds of little stuff. And he's, I don't know. He's just, he's a muddy guy. I'm interested on his story of being self-made or if he's instead like an actual, like active, like appointed spy, you know, what I got self-made meaning he didn't attend any Academy and he's doing his own Jade thing. Right. And that's what I don't know if I buy. Oh, you think he's a spy? Spy? I think he's a like a mountain greenbone that has been placed with this false story mm. to spy on No Peak. Welcome to the conspiracy corner. But now, PJ. but now Barrow's <laughs> spying for the mountain on No Peak. I guess that yeah, lines up. It, yeah, it still aligns. Ultimately, like I don't think that makes a difference and doesn't really change. I, I just I feel like there's something shadier lurking for this guy just to confirm he's like he's like paying tribute to no peak right but he's like passing information on to mountain clan okay now we move into chapter 13 a favor asked we talk to tall shay living in a trendy village in jan loon she's still struggling to settle into her new experiences in her old home stuff lon stops by for a visit and with a task for his younger sister asked her to audit the Jade Mines record books. I thought this chapter just wonderful in terms of, you know, like scene building, world building. We learned a lot about Jan Loon. Yeah, she says she can wear her new Espenian wardrobe because of North Soto being gentrified. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, the the interactions between her and the cute boy in her apartment <laughs> were, were oh, fun. Sweet. She doesn't say call, and he's like, ooh, she likes ooh. me. <laughs> <laughs> and I like. I think the funniest part of that is he's not wrong, and she legitimately just forgot to say it because <laughs> yeah. she was flustered and liked him too much. <laughs> yeah. I, I fully believe that that person is one of Hilo's guys. Ooh, I thought it was going to go Romeo and Juliet, and I thought oh. he was going to be a mountain person. I think she's still, Ooh. isn't she still in a no peak area? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like Lon asked Hilo to place men around her and she keeps seeing him. So he's probably spying on her. Uh, mm. yeah, I didn't <laughs> think about that. Conspiracy and then she's going to opposite. Point. She, <laughs> she's going to like fall in love with this guy and then she's going to find out that he's a Hilo guy. Mm. And then she'll be like, you lied to me. I can't trust anyone. I was kind of thinking they were going to go down the route of he's a regular guy and she likes him and then they get involved and then he gets like brutally murdered as like <laughs> collateral damage in this oh, Jade no. War situation. She already, she already <laughs> tried to hook up with a regular guy and that ended her back at square one. That's true. Yeah, so I guess between the three of us, do any of us believe this relationship goes well? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Or is there even a relationship? I think I think she just has a crush yeah. on a guy who ends up being She was very cute though. He loves guy. Mm-hmm. And then it was interesting how like nervous she was around Lon. Because like thinking of my own older brother, like if he came by, I wouldn't be like embarrassed if my house was messy or something. So like he's not just an older brother. He's obviously the pillar, but she's 
she respects him as the pillar. She's not just like, what up, bro? Sit on my uncomfortable couch. Yeah. She definitely holds she's, him in a high regard. She's the middle child, right? No. Or she's, she's the youngest. youngest. Besides Andon. Okay, mm-hmm. so she's more than nine years and, younger. Yeah, she's like way long, younger. And then she was raised by Carl Sen, not her dad. Because he was already dead. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's maybe a little bit of embarrassment, too. Like, she she's living in this comparatively much more meager place, and it's not that well put together yet. And knowing that he's coming from this mansion... And is like the most one of the most powerful people on in the city. I don't I don't know that she came off as so much like nervous, more as just self conscious. I'd like to jump in here. So we noticed that with Shay, and then we notice in chapter eleven, Lon makes a comment about how Andon is always form overly formal, almost if he's a he's a guest in his own home. And then this is just me mm-hmm. reading into things here. But it's like, it seems kind of like Hilo's the only one comfortable amongst his family and that Lon, Shay, Andin, they all have various degrees of uncomfortability when interacting with the siblings. I'm wondering if anyone has yeah. any other thoughts about something similar, thinks I'm crazy. Well, Hilo is also uncomfortable because he's like hiding his relationship, kind of living a double life. They're all like... Not really in the household, though. In the household, he's like a swaggering dick. Well, that's like what he puts on i don't know you gotta don't. put on my swagger and dick <laughs> as opposed to my casual i had not dick. picked up on that but i do like that observation thomas i think yeah, that's uh yeah. well Andon has reason to be uncomfortable because he's really not a call yeah and shay again has reason to be embarrassed because she made this big <laughs> pronouncement that she's leaving and never coming back and then now she's like crawling back I don't and know. so you feel like she's crawling back yeah like genuinely okay i didn't get I, crawling back i think she feels like she's crawling back yeah i think she thinks she's given off that impression well she i mean she literally gave up on all she like set all these goals well, to she, go on her own and then she came back well she got her fucking heart broken aaron well even, even then she like tried to interview and stuff she's like this is so much harder with call doesn't mean anything but she's still trying to do it on her own the yeah, way but it's still the way easy she's easy when everybody does know you as call yeah <laughs> that's true yeah i don't know i see what she's doing right now is a little petulant wow Ooh. like just take take the responsibility and then like do something good with it don't like shun the responsibility and try to like I don't know. She could like do so much more if she just accepted her position. She could become weatherman, kick Doru out. Like it would make the clan a lot stronger if she wasn't like throwing a fit, basically. I don't see her as throwing does, a fit, but it feels maybe not quite that aggressive, but almost like she wants to have her cake and eat it too. Like she Golden wants Jade. to remove herself from the <laughs> she wants to remove herself from the family, but she still wants to benefit from having the name. Yeah. I think that was. Does some, she want to benefit though? Yes, she's that's kind why of she like, came back. Yeah, I agree with PJ. I mean, I ex- I I see where you're coming. Those are real like motherly vibes coming out of you right now with that type <laughs> of tough love that you're giving to Shay. I'm a little more. I've got a soft spot for her. I guess. I don't. I don't see her as like crawling back. I think she's embarrassed about her situation. She took like this big giant risk that nobody in her family would ever do like nobody would even think like it's like this thing that could dishonor her basically and she risked it all and then she got her heart broken because the guy that she chose is a dickhead dishonor on you dishonor on your cow and so then she tried to figure (laughs) it out and had a tough time and then she's like i need to be home i need to feel what it's like to be home so that's to me kind of where she's at and I don't think that she necessarily like wants to use her name. I think she is just like, this would be much easier. She does talk about that a lot. Um, and that does, I, I agree. That does sound a little whiny at times for the choices that she made. But if I was the same, if I was in that position, I'd be doing the same thing. Being a little whiny little bitch. <laughs> and I don't know. I think she deserves, like, I would like, I want to watch where she's going, but I don't think that she's necessarily 
like I said, I don't think she's throwing a fit so much as like trying to figure it out. I can I can get behind that. I stand by what I said. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm just Ben. I'm so with you there. I, that as as the whiny little bitch of them moved closer to their parents again. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't want to live in a closet in New York after everything that was going on was going on. It didn't make any sense, and uh, here we are. So I totally agree with you. Can you imagine being like someone who's an expatriate, then like basically not having a home on the other side because you're demeaned because of right. your race again and then being like well i guess i need to go to the place where i'm accepted and then at the same time you don't want to take part in that it's so it's such a tough spot to be in at the same time as like pj and aaron obviously are on the side of join the gang join the <laughs> right. gang what the fuck are you well, doing she's like shirking her Get with the program she's shirking her responsibility Hell and i think like that's but, not her responsibility it's, it's her responsibility yeah i think that I, you guys are fucked Unless no Pete <laughs> well, gets sh- Shay back and the mountain, well, which is the team that, I'm gotta on. Gotta think about them like people. <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, I'm considering her <laughs> yeah. as a human being here. A human and- being. <laughs> And the human beings don't. And you're have thinking about the, you're thinking about the organization. <laughs> I mean, I so, think we do, so if, but well, like, when they murder people, when they murder kids, right. I don't know yeah, exactly. I think not there's a kid. so <laughs> not now. I haven't I seen have. any children be murdered. <laughs> <laughs> no dead. So I, I think the other thing to point out is that a lot of that rhetoric and a lot of the commentary on Shay not wanting to be involved in family politics and in in family operations comes from Lon, not from Shay herself. And it comes from Lon feeling bad about bringing her back in. It doesn't really come so much. And maybe there are a couple comments here and there about her, but she doesn't outwardly seem like she's opposed to doing these. No, she have a very active disagreement. She's she's definitely opposed opposed to the idea. She really, yeah. yeah, Lon's Lon's trying to bring her in about it. Lon's trying to bring her in and she's like, what else? And he's like, nothing else. She's like, you're not going to ask any more of me. He's, and he's like, no, I promise I won't. Even though he will, we all know he's going to. Right? I don't so. know. He seems like the perfect older brother. So I think that's where I disagree. As an older brother. I, I can kind of get where you're coming from, Aaron and PJ, yeah. where I like, she does need to take, I think, m- kind of more responsibility for some of the choices that she's made and like not be so whiny about it but at the same time that's a very human response to like making some choices and being like oh shit i fucked up and like this should be easier and And i could have done it this way she's trying to prove herself on her own but the i i think she's much younger than the other brothers so she's growing up and she had obviously a different experience growing up than the boys because Obviously, Doru was pedophile to her best friend. And so then she was like, fuck the clan. And I don't want to be a weatherman anymore. So he kind of ruined her path. But the way to prove herself should, I think, she'll grow into realizing that the way to prove herself is by like taking on her responsibility, putting her jade on, being the weatherman, and supporting Doling down into the family, supporting yeah. land, killing Doru. Ooh, she should kill Doru. I kind of have like more respect <laughs> for her though if she doesn't, because that's harder. That's the harder path. Like the harder path, the easier but, path is to just like put is, the chain on and, is, is and join the, the family gang. I don't think it's easier. She's gonna have to have a lot of work to do to like piece this clan back together, which is totally getting fucked from the shadows by Doru. And I'd like to disagree with Ben a little bit. I think the easy path is what she's doing or what she was planning on doing of coming back and benefiting from having this prestigious name and writing off actually doing anything for the clan. She was trying not to use her name actively on every situation. Like every time that it was ever brought up, she was trying not to use her name. She was never trying yeah. to leverage her name for anything. No, that's, that's, that's the that's whole thing. She thinks about like, it. How are you going to get a job without telling them your name? And people, she, you're like the most famous woman in the No Peak Zone in Jan Loon. Very true. So how are you going to not? You're like Princess Diana sneaking away and like working at a coffee shop. Right. She's <laughs> you know? definitely trying to do that. <laughs> you're going to try yeah. though. She's definitely trying to. It's just right. it's impossible. Right. She, and I think yeah. what PJ, she already like, tried I to do that. She tried to do it. Well, she went to the other country. 
found that it was too difficult when she didn't but have... But the country the- was racist, so that's a little bit different than... So, what I yes. think TJ's saying, basically, is... Yeah. So, she's going to come in and take advantage of her ingrained benefits without feeling like she's benefiting from them. Like, she has this inherent privilege because of her name, and she's going to benefit from it consciously. Yeah, or I can understand that. And yeah, so, it is easy to well be put. like, oh, I'm self-made with this tall name while neglecting planned business. That's, so I, I see what that I would agree with that. Based but on what we know. Cr- Cross is no, right. I, I she totally like, agree with that for the record. Yeah, but, but she's, she's trying, trying not, not to. to. She doesn't want anyone to know that she's a call. Classic. Then why did she you know, come back to Jan Loon? Because she didn't have a home anywhere yeah, else. She, didn't have she did. She couldn't get a job, and her husband, she, she boyfriend, she husband, dating a fuck boy, boyfriend. boyfriend. Yeah, and he was fucking other chicks. <laughs> I mean, come on, that's heartbreaking. If you gave up your entire, like, basically, like, royal life <laughs> to go hang out with some douchebag. Live in Europe. Yeah. <laughs> with a douchebag. You mean, like, and you then mean it like, was a douchebag. <laughs> and you came back home and you're like, I don't want to jump back into royalty. Yeah. You mean like Harry and, and royalty Meghan? royalty was like, fuck you, dude. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I just. Harry, I, and, Harry and Meghan. H&M. Like, yeah. yeah. She yeah. couldn't. Yeah. The racism aspect of it makes sense. But. Like there, there are other places she could have gone. She also, yeah, she quit region. very quickly. Like even if she had to leave that country because she couldn't get a job there, there were other, there are other regions that she could have gone where she's not insanely famous. It's, it has nothing to do with being famous though in the other country. It is entirely to do with the fact that she is from, she's Kekanese. It yeah, just, and, like, yeah, there are, there yeah. are other cities even like that aren't, that aren't Jan Loon. That are talked about in this section. I can't remember the name of it, but where uh, she could go to Egatan with the bad food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, if she really wants to be self made, she has to distance herself physically from the clan. Perhaps we require more information. I just think but. that inevitably she'll end up back in clan business, whether she likes it or not. And then she. <laughs> You're can, just like, get on with it already. Yeah. Like, <laughs> put your bracelets on, help your brother out. <laughs> All right, all right. <laughs> this got long winded. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that was fun. No, it's good. It's. I mean, it's. It's an important conversation to have, especially because I think it is very interesting surrounding the character. Chapter fourteen: Gold and Jade. Lon pulls on his friend Woon Papidanwa to help him visit Wisdom Hall and have a discussion with the senator to propose a new law. We see a flash of his experience with his father, explaining the lesson of the history of gold and jade as separate forces within the country of Kacon. We then return to the conversation with the chancellor and negotiate a way to accomplish goals for both parties and maintain the alliance within the KJA. I love this chapter. For me, this is when this book evolves into something very different. We start to get these political machinations in the background. This was something that you guys had asked about last week. Like, is it just the two clans running the whole thing? And it's like, no, and I'm so excited to talk about it <laughs> because we get these we get these other pictures, which is like the KJ is this legit business that runs the Jade Assembly. And then on the other side, we have Wisdom Hall and these senators of whom are loyal to the clans. But there's some degree of separation. Thoughts? Mm-hmm. I, I loved the. So I've got a few different thoughts. First of all, because it's immediately what you first talked about or last talked about. The chancellor was a lantern man for the mountain clan. Is that what it was? No, for no peak. Was the it, chancellor it, that they're meeting is no peak. It no. was no peak. Okay. So that, I mean, there's the idea of anyone who wears jade cannot govern and anyone who governs cannot wear jade. Like, I, I like that as a like hard and fast rule, but that doesn't remove like clan alliances as you're seeing here with like, they're trying to, they're trying to be as unbiased as possible, but it's always going to have the, like, your past can't leave you entirely. I'll I'll bring up my other points later as we get to it. If anybody has commentary on this immediately, my first thought was "Woon Papidanwa" sounded like a Star Wars name. I thought the same thing. Okay, <laughs> I'm glad somebody said that because I was about to say it. Yeah. <laughs> Woon Papidanwa. Woon Papi man. Woon Papi. <laughs> the Pillar Man. Yeah, I I agree with PJ. It's like they're trying to be like you know. The people leading don't have jade, but it's it kind of reminds me of the figurehead of the Queen of England. Like the government's like, 
a figurehead and they have this like pomp and circumstance. Well, it sounded like they also have like a royal family too. Right? Yeah, they said something about like across the way there's like s- such and stuff. Yeah, they mentioned like a palace or something. There's an emperor. Emperor. Yeah. yeah. So they they really are just a figurehead, right? That's what it sounded like, yes, to me. And then they do like the ritualistic like saluting the statue or at the end of the path or whatever. It seems like a lot of like formality to cover up the fact that like we know who's actually ruling here. Yeah. Yeah. Two things. I was very happy to get this information because I was wondering about it last time. This is a lot of good stuff. I was like, this explains a lot. Very important context and information about how this country actually works. So that was cool. Also, finally, like we were talking about a few chapters earlier, no peak. Getting some schemes going. It's important. It's time we started scheming. We should have been scheming a long time ago, but finally we're up to something. So uh, I bet Juan was scheming, but it, he's like doing it all in a nice way. He's too nice. He's a nice guy. He's just a nice guy. That's why we like him. That's, you know, it, I don't yeah. think it's going to end well for him. <laughs> <laughs> it does seem like, and this kind of goes back to I, I don't know, think a thing that we were talking about in a few chapters earlier, but like kind of what Thomas mentioned, where it's like Hilo very comfortable in his role. The rest of the family maybe not, and that makes them like not well suited for clan business it feels like so that's going to put them in conflict as characters i think which makes it exciting for us as readers to see these people that you know some of the i guess and then a thing to think about there is like some sometimes the people that are not the best like or don't want the job and when they get thrust into that position they kind of rise to the occasion and become great so maybe that's something that could happen with with some of the call family here as well with Uh, great power comes great responsibility we'll see but it seems like they're going to need to get better at this and they i just see a real ned stark in this character (laughs) (laughs) it does not look great for him i mean it just i've fooled me once I'm not getting my heart broken again. Feels like he's just gonna have a moon blade sticking out of his chest at some point. You're just gonna be like, shit. Should have seen this coming. He, I'm sorry, we're not in this chapter yet. But like he's leaving himself up in the last chapter. It's like, oh, you take all your jade off at a whorehouse. I wonder what could go wrong. We'll get there. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I also have thoughts on that. <laughs> But I did like, I really liked hearing about the government and the emperor. That was like a throwaway line. So we don't know a lot about that. And then the golden jade setup, it's it's really smart because they're learning from the past when people with jade murder everyone yeah. with itches. This was like, it really colored the world really well. Like there, a lot of, we shaded in a lot of like background stuff that I needed to get shaded in here. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Stephen King, but it was great world building. We're not supposed to say world building, I guess, but no, he's just like people <laughs> use it wrong <laughs> more often than not. <laughs> they mean scene setting and they say world mm, building. Okay. Ooh, what? This was world building. This is yeah. world building. Was this was context. city, oh, city but, building. Yeah, this I just, I, I love Stephen. This is Jan I just don't Lynn want him to be mad at me. You know, <laughs> he's definitely listening. So obviously, Who uses world building when they mean seed and set it. I want examples. That sounds like a straw man. A lot of fools. Let me hear it. Let a me lot of fools. name three. <laughs> Not you, Stephen. Oh, boy. Stephen. Right now, Stephen, name three. <laughs> I mean, okay. All right. Those feel like such Let's different see. concepts that it like I I I don't understand how they can be conflated for one another. I agree. But the problem is that a lot of people don't think about media in the same way that us do sitting here at this table. So I, I think that that's part of the reason why. Give Does this mean I'm an the fact that, now? Like, PJ means that I'm giving you more credit than you <laughs> you probably have deserved. Rude. But, I mean, yeah, you're doing better than, you know, Jane Doe down the apartment line. Lay people are allowed to fuck up with like the dogs. Who cares? It's like, if it's not a book reviewer making that mistake, like, what? Calm down, Steven. Relax. Mm hmm. Yeah, those those filthy peasants down there. They could, they they're allowed they to do want. whatever they want. The people have casual well, I'm not going to allow Stephen King to be experts. Here. I, think. I don't like Stephen yeah. King. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know, but I'm not going to allow it either. So, you I'm know, slander. Here I am. <laughs> ben and I are puffing out our chest. No, My chest has been puffed. You're arguing them yeah, the whole time. 
I'm ready. Are we? Are we going? Are we? Are we gonna? Stop. Stop. Um, did anybody Stop. else? Cut! 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 It's getting weird. <laughs> I thought it was just getting good. <laughs> Rain, raining this back in a little bit. Did anybody else feel like? going into the conspiracy corner did anybody else feel like there's some secret power that gold might have oh i didn't consider that but i do like that path no i think it's just money and power what kind of secret power are you talking about do we think it like makes super j something where like super j something dangerous shit happens when you like Mm, you get like monster itches jade and gold and and shit (laughs) impale yourself with it hulk yeah that is true we haven't seen people wearing like jade studded gold jewelry right right no i mean what are the armbands that those are like specifically seem to not say gold I think they're when described. Really, Post? I would go back. Post? Can you guys verify? Mm-hmm. I'll look it up. You're wondering about some gold details or <laughs> details I, in clothing. My dashi I think you're wearing just gonna gold have to wait a little. Bracelet. <laughs> I think PJ not, might be onto not, something. She's not wearing know. gold bracelets. No, her the thing wrapped up her arm with all the jade. Is it? I don't think it's, it's gold. not it's studded not in gold. gold. No, mm. that's definitely not. Continue. I have the Kindle right here. <laughs> I'm, I'm on the chapter. Actually, <laughs> still, I like that. A lot. I need you know, a, a material, please. Yeah, I wonder if okay. it's something yeah, like it. dangerous, or if it's like super super jade powers, or what else it could be. But it, it gave me. There's money in the banana stand vibes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's so, very well said. <laughs> Rip Netflix. <laughs> Rip Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> They're removing Arrested Development from Netflix. Well, I mean, anyway, that's you, said, side you didn't note, say but... Rip Arrested Development. You said Rip. Aaron's just reading. Double <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> checking. I forgot that I was tall, which makes me like her even more because I love a tall woman. True. Checks out. You, you Checks forgot out. that you were tall. No, I Madashi is no, she is loves tall, me. and I like a tall woman. I'm just saying more points for Mata. It's going to be really anticlimactic so, when you find out she's not. What do you guys think about Chancellor Stone tomorrow? He was, you know, he's scheming back. I think he knows that he can ask for things because Lon isn't a hothead. And he's not scared of offending because he's like, oh, that he's reasonable. You ask for something, I'll ask for something in return. Yeah, he seemed mm. like he did a pretty good job of being unbiased, but that doesn't mean he's just not a pushover. Yeah, you know, like I, I, I liked this character. He was, he, he was a politician. It, like yeah. he's very he's much very so much a politician. politician. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna say. But better than Palpatine. <laughs> was really, for sure. You mean lightning? He seems fingers? to work well within the <laughs> constraints that are set set up for him, um, and he really seems to ha- understand the game. Like yeah. have a strong understanding of the situation. He did not strike me as like a full-on lackey or anything like that like he, he you, don't, you don't think he's a spy for the mountain because you think everyone's a spy no 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 i don't hey everybody's in the conspiracy <laughs> corner but when you're in the conspiracy <laughs> corner it's a safe place to talk about conspiracy <laughs> not when i'm her <laughs> that's why you're Aaron not in the conspiracy, of the yeah. conspiracy <laughs> corner <laughs> you're violating the tenets of the conspiracy i corner. apologize <laughs> I feel like Anna was killing my boy son though. She kept calling him fat. There's all these like the chairs protesting. Yeah, he like struggles to stand up. It's tough. <laughs> tough. Politician. Tough. Yeah, and yeah, Lon called him like he'd be, he'd become soft and all that type of stuff. I do want to flash back the slightest bit to the moment with the statue that Lon has as he approaches Wisdom Hall, holding the lantern with the child, and he says, "Out of darkness in the." As the, I should say, the plaque reads, out of darkness in the memory of the mountain men who fought for Kikon's freedom and the brave citizens who aided them. I I just think that this whole scene of like this sort of patriotic pride that's held at the front. Obviously, it's a capital city. That makes sense. You're going to have those memorials. But this idea that it's also related immediately to the clans and what they did for the country is very interesting in their founding. Yeah, it just really speaks to the amount of influence that they have. And there's really just a part of life there. And it's weird because they're gangs, but uh, they're the uprising. 
but true they're like responsible for the creation of the country so and i don't know is it in this chapter where we get a lot of history and we we do get some it's it's spread out between but we do get the flashback with with called do mm-hmm. and we do get some of that like meaty bit of history as lawn remembering his childhood and talking about the golden jade metaphor yeah i i'm like starting to grasp like the history so the who are the bad guys Mountain the Shatarians uh, came yeah. in they like bombed everyone i ugantans the shits his son yeah. and young wife died that's why he didn't have children like and then the people from the mountain you know the green bums came down and liberated everyone it is interesting to me the liberators are from the mountain and then they became separate clans right so like all mm-hmm. the green bones are they descended from the mountain to yeah, get the like- Shatarians. but now those people are also no peak and those two other clans that got absorbed or whatever are there only two clans now no there's no, like there, there's a bunch of smaller ones but no peak owns 35% and mountain owns 39 of of the KJ yeah. KJ yeah Okay. So they they account for oh. over seventy percent. It's noted that the three run clan was recently absorbed because uh, I killed by all, the mountain. All of their yep families. Carol, <clears throat> you know she just she did. She's just whispering names. She got a walkie talkie. Yeah. Watch out! And I the statue part was cool because it was saying like you could interpret it. I did like that. that was either like the child is leading the soldier or the soldier is helping the child. There's a nice duality there. Mm -hmm. That's why I love that. And I wanted to bring it up for sure. It's it's just, ah, it's so good. Um, Mm -hmm. So what was your, speaking of soldiers, have they mentioned the structure of the Kekanese military at all? Is that, is that operated by the clans or do they have a separate non green bone standing military? (laughs) Cross isn't going to answer. Find out. Massive shrug. Yeah. Raffo. Okay. I haven't talked about it yet. While we're still in this chapter, I wanted to touch on mm-hmm. a quote that struck out or stuck out to me, rather, from Welcome to Drinking on a Podcast. Uh, You're gonna miss You're finally Carl's not sick, great. Thomas. I know. My dude <laughs> Tal do yeah. in the flashback. A little excerpt I want to read here. Lon's father ignored the noise and continued in a calm undertone. A man who wears the crown of a king can't wear the jade of a warrior. Gold and jade never together. We green bones live by Iosho. We defend the country from its enemies and the wheat from the strong. Kaldu held his son out at arm's length. His left eye narrowed and his expression grew thoughtful. After this war is over, after the Shadis are defeated, the clan will have to rebuild the country and protect the people from disorder. Ah, I don't think I'll be alive to see it, Lance. But you'll have to be a different kind of green bone than me. So there's two two interesting things that stand out for me. One, not that interesting. He says clan, of course, which is at that time the one mountain society. But then the you'll have to be a different kind of green bone than me. I wonder if we think maybe that colors how Lon lives his life today and how that could in turn color his relationship with his grandfather who so desperately wants Lon to be his departed father while Lon knows what his father would have wanted for him. I really like what you said there about how that informs his relationship with his grandpa. That's, that's fantastic. And and the, the the reason I think that he's going to need to be a different green bone is like being a revolutionary and breaking something is a different, that, that calls for a different type of skills, like than ruling something and, and leading. And so and le- We're so comfortable talking about this because of Red Rising. Right. Go read those books. <laughs> but yes. Breaking and building. <laughs> breaking and building, yes. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it's much easier to kind of like do the breaking, but the building part is very, very difficult and calls for a lot of different skills and a lot. It, it asks a lot of the leader. So, yeah, that's that's a great point. I love that idea of how that re- informs his relationship with with the big call. Yeah. It, it makes you think that call do was like war weary, war weary. 
and like grandpa's like stuck in a flashback living the glory days like let's be honest like he's like you want to fight <laughs> hey, Sonny, I'll kill you with my cane. Like, still treating it treating it like the korean war the vietnam war like any ptsd flashback right that, you know ever has existed yeah and lan and mm -hmm. lawn just has like a different understanding every time we say sorry land and lawn you guys ever seen star wars and lando mm -hmm. calls him han all the time yeah. That's what I think of. He calls him Han like instead the entire yeah. instead of You're Han. Right. Yeah. Why? <laughs> I don't know. It's just something I guess is a choice that he made. I don't know. Damn. Some would say it's because Lando's a dick. I don't know. Maybe, Man. maybe he was fucking with Han Solo. <laughs> it would be. Would it be Lon? It should be right because the, the narrator it's, says Lon. No. It's There's it's no... Lon, and it's the... gotta be. He Lon. does say Lon, yeah. but. But my point was more like the actual English pronunciation of like the vowels. I'm pretty sure it's lawn. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. But yeah, he's because like lawn shin one. That's why yeah. it's it's because of the hop vowel. Anyway, sorry. English. Name. But yeah, I mean, he he has a totally different understanding of like what is required of him in his role. And so like it just makes it difficult that grandpa's still alive and grandpa's got this whole vision and grandpa's stuck in the past and living living out the war like every single day of his life and it makes it difficult to navigate that because you, you're just never going to be able to reason with it and if he's never going to understand what's required of lawn how is he ever going to live up to like his expectations that is very well said i think and then also there's another interesting incredible what you say cross I said incredible. Okay. That was it. There's an, another interesting tidbit in the flashback that I think kind of alludes to that, where it's basically when Call Sen and Call Du would uh, would show up in the house, the Lan's mother and grandmother would like worship them, basically. And so it, it presents to me almost as if Lan might be the only one who knew the real Call Du, or like does now, because Call Sen is stuck in the past worshiping his dead son. Everyone is worshiping him, and Lan had this different experience with him than anyone else. Love that. I'd love to gather outside of that general thoughts on call do as a father in this moment. This is kind of the first time that we're really exposed to him as a dad. And we, we get this quote also that is like curse that howler demon of a baby, <laughs> which is. <Severo>? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does feel very sad, but there, but there's that whole concept around like that being a wives tale of like a screaming baby is going to be a superior Jade warrior. I just want your, your picture of call do as you imagine him now well they say he's basically an absent father like he's never around and then lon is kind of worried he's asking too many questions because he doesn't want him to like go away you know and then we get a sweet moment where do gives lon attention and tells him about golden jade but they they allude to like he's not around much and i don't think it's like because he doesn't want to be there, you know, it's like he's just got this higher sense of purpose and duty at this point in his life. And so he's not able to be a father as much as he would love to. I think that if he was like not a freedom fighter, be a very loving, I get the idea that he'd be like a very loving, good father, but because of the circumstance of his life, he's not able to. And so, but he has these great moments where he's able to kind of shine through. Mm -hmm. loving but maybe a little bit gruff a little bit tough that seems like part of the but culture that doesn't make yeah. for a bad father by any means it, it is this thing of purpose versus family and and there is this sort of like core theme of like what's what what's my duty to country what's my duty to my people what am i doing for the future and at the same time my family's going to benefit in the long run as we've obviously witnessed but at the same time there's that absentee father problem where it's like, I did all this work to create a situation lost me because of whatever happened. Oh, it's rough. It's rough a lot to be dealt. Can't help but feel bad for the man, despite like hoping that he would have chosen differently. Sure. I don't know. I I've got, I've got mixed feelings on the whole bag. It's tough. It's just those difficult. Every like, revolution needs a leader. Right, those but. human choices that we all have to make, obviously not to that like degree, but that's just, that's why life is so kind of bittersweet sometimes and, and difficult to to navigate. Fuck Fonda for putting this in within the first hundred <laughs> pages, you know? Like, what the fuck? Do we know yeah, how nice Call Do died? 
What's Do up? we know how Caldu died? No. I don't think we have that yet. Okay. I, uh, I'm assuming it's in the war. Or maybe we'll find out Doru killed him. Dun, dun, dun. 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 <laughs> Giant operatic <laughs> piano. Princess 2. 15. A bargain with demons. Hilo approaches a biter dame called the Chrome Demons who have been wreaking mild havoc in No Pete territory and offers them a deal. They can avoid No Pete retaliation and taxation so long as they limit their crimes to mountain controlled parts of the city and bring Hilo information on the Carver Tem Bent. That's a move, man. Yeah. But to, to start it out with the admiration of the bike and then. I, for one, really thought the what do you appreciate more, your bike or your face, was going in a completely different direction. But I loved that line. <laughs> yeah. Where did you think this it was going? This struck me as like... I, I, thought, I thought it was going to be like, he gets to choose which one to keep. Okay, so you thought mm. it would be similar but worse. I, well, I thought it was, instead of him attacking his face after he says, I like my face more, I thought it was going to be, okay, that's my bike now. Okay. <laughs> and also, here's the deal. It was all some gang shit. I feel like we've seen, you know, lots of versions of this. This is like, this struck me as a very movie-ish, movie scene moment. Cinematic? Uh, yeah, which I really appreciated. Perhaps. I saw that too. But it's a, it. you kind of see Hilo um, at the end of it when, is it Mike Tar? Which Mike is it? Make. Tar. But Make, I think it's Make it Tar. Yeah. Tar, who's like... Neil, bitch, and <laughs> Hilo is like, well, we don't need to like shame him more. Like Hilo's being pretty level headed, and yeah, we're actually seeing him do like a this is he's like good at this. Yeah, and you're like, okay, so Hilo, he's like being a dickhead, obviously, to these other dickheads, but <laughs> <laughs> he's like doing it in a measured way. Right. Like he he's like doing it for a purpose. Yeah, he's like Hilo is a hothead and a dickhead, but. He's competent at this horn job. I feel like this this seems like I, a I, good move. And even though he's a hothead, he's still he's still like considering like he with the mountain. He didn't like fuck anything up, right? You know, he's not like such a hothead he's that still, he's not yeah. scheming. And Lon mentions that at one point, like he still has a lot of respect for like the hierarchy and mm -hmm. the gang structure. So he's just really in this gang life. Credit to our audio boy where it's due. This is one of those moments where he actually acts out the whole thing. And it feels like Hilo is in the room, like waving his hands around being big and grandiose of being like, who's going to step against me. And that's what I loved about it so much is like versus the portrayal immediately in the text. This gives the sort of sense of like opening it up to the room. Like what, what are you going to do? And it just sort of gives this context that I adore the audiobook for in the moment. That's a good point. Yeah, th those moments are few and far between, I feel like, compared to some of our other, like... Red Rising. Red yeah. Rising and Michael Kramer with, with like... Yeah, sure. Mistborn. Like, this feels a lot less emotional in the audiobook, but this was a very, very well done scene in that respect. And we got to see some Jade powers. Yeah. That was interesting. And you see these, like, hardened criminals... Real, like they know that they are gonna get fucked up. <laughs> they have no, they're powerless, yeah, to this assault, basically. And it's crazy that like green bones are walking in here with like what, like knives and their jade, and basically, and like these people have guns and they're not and motorcycles. scared of them at all, and they don't stand a chance. So, I mean, that like informs a lot of like what a green bone can do. Like that they're going to step into a room full of gangsters with guns and not have any issues at all. There's some interesting like meta textual thing here for me with like Akira, which is one of the biggest animes ever. Right. And, and it's like, this is this big motorcycle gun gang in cyberpunk future. And this is like basically fondly stepping in and being like Akira couldn't exist here because of the green bones and, and then showing that off throughout this chapter. And I love that. It just fits in my brain perfectly for the, for the context of the medium. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It really puts like the green bones in context within 
the society because like this motorcycle gang sounds like some bad dudes like they're up to bad stuff but like the no peak clan and like the Greenbone clans are on a entirely different level from these like common kind of what seem like just street level criminals it, it's yeah, i mean the clans are a pseudo government yeah. at this point and with a lot of like a major amount of power just like incredible amount of power both physical and kind of hidden power it's surprising to me that there are gangs like this and so much crime when you know i don't know it's like gotham city like everyone's corrupt top down mm. <laughs> well it's like I, why is there so about- much crime when there's like green bones who should be like superheroes but they're all just criminals well they they protect the lantern men so it, it's almost like a an extortion ring of hey there's all these criminals going around they're fucking your shit up pay us for protection yeah and like I, I, but isn't like, that kind of criminal why don't they just like absolutely that's why they're not actually government <laughs> the city needs green bone batman green bone <laughs> Seems so, launching one <laughs> in two chapters, which I'm sure we'll touch on more than there is a distinction about how there's like the green bone crime is obviously rampant in the city, but like other cities, foreign cities are rife with like traditional crime, whereas Jan Loon doesn't have that problem because of things like like the chrome demons were causing a problem for X amount of time, but then Hilo rides in and he's like, stop. So there's that implication that like this type of general criminality is stamped down. Okay. So they don't operate within Jan Loon? No, they do, but it's like a weird where it's like there is obviously crime and vice and stuff, but it's like it's more regulated than rampant. So or it's least, not Gotham. That's so that's what Lon <laughs> says, how much we want to believe him up to us. In chapter yes. 17 this week, he's basically talking about like what's allowed, what's not allowed, yeah. like to the degree to which the green bones enable some of these things like gambling or otherwise mm-hmm. i just brought it up now so. because there was uh, a little bit of discussion on it bits right what did we make of Hilo as a manager in general we touched on it a little bit but i think there's a little more there he feels like a very i don't know he feels like in this moment this is the first time where i'm like okay he was pretty competent at his job and seems like he has a pretty good handle on it and he has like a good feel for his people that uh, seems like and and then we learn like how loyal we kind of touch on that in the first on the first podcast, but we get more even more information on that here where it's like the clan loves him. So he's clearly got some positive things going going on for him. And like I said, he seems to be a, <laughs> a pretty competent gangster. He's effective. Yeah. Well, he was effective. We don't know <laughs> about the future. <laughs> You're worried it about him not being effective in the future because he's dead. <laughs> oh, perhaps, perhaps. I know. I was like, they Aren't don't we all dead in the future. Show me though? the body like, what, is what I mean? said. That's very Anyways, true. That's Cross. for that's, true. that's for the future. <laughs> all right. Experience. I I do I do want to throw one more thing in here, which is that what do you make at this point? We've gotten some time with the Make family. We've got Wen, Tar, and Ken. Right, yeah, sir. Make Tar Ken as the as the trio. What do you guys think about the the Make family on the whole? Where do we stand? I'm not sure what to think yet. I'm trying to figure out if they're just kind of like bitch boys, or <laughs> if there are, is like some bitch, real s- bitch boys with a horse sister. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> okay, I did not. <laughs> All right, <laughs> we've already been derided for. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just not like I'm not sure if they're like bitch boy Aaron boys for Hilo and just like his dogs, sure. or if they're like there's actually substance there. I'm still trying to figure that out. I see him as bitch yeah, boys, yeah, the twins. Okay. Right. I'm inclined to think the same way, but I'm really not sure. Yeah, right now, same way with whom you have two different with Aaron. Okay. Yeah, I would lean bitch, bitch boy as well. They yeah. are bitch boys. Yeah, but. I am open to being wrong. Maybe they're too loyal. Maybe That's a they seem like dummies. Kind of like Maybe you know, they they're... seem like they're kind of dumb, what? like kind of thick. What was that, Crossland? 
What did he say? <laughs> I said I mean, I'm open to I was being like, wrong, and he, under his breath, said, "That's a first. <laughs> That's a first. <laughs> Specifically, undercutting in the moment. That's <laughs> good. But yeah, they're dumb bitch boys. They they're like they're he, they're they are the hotheads. <laughs> dumb bitch. All right, so they're not just bitch boys. They're dumb bitch boys now. <laughs> like they're the hotheads. Well, yeah, I just don't with, think with a hot sister. Yeah, right. It seems like I don't. Yeah, that's what I said. Well. Hot sister. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they just seem like more like muscle thug type. And they're good at it. And I I don't have a good read on like if they're doing anything else other than that. Yeah. They seem like kilos thugs that he has not a lot of respect for. But they're yeah. very loyal to him, so that makes them look dumb. Aaron, you said maybe they're the hotheads. Does that mean you think Hilo is erroneously presented as a hothead or was that just a meme? No, like when make tar is like get on your knees bitch Mm -hmm. and Hilo's like the one considering like oh that was too far like if Hilo's the one saying you went too far then you're probably a problem (laughs) raining in the fists yeah right like yeah I got you so you're saying which is the horn's job but yeah so you're saying basically like at least make tar runs even hotter Yes. Maybe okay. Hilo's got a bad rep. Maybe. Maybe he's the one who killed Hilo. Maybe people are just out there trying to like spread rumors Hilo. about Hilo. <laughs> Aaron is predicting <laughs> for like a time time of which no one, no one at the say. end of this chapter at this group of chapters they say the mountain whispered his name and he's covered in Hilo's blood. He's covered in blood. In blood. And he says the mountain whispered Hilo's name. I don't think we're there yet, Aaron. Well, now these two slippery snakes <laughs> make me think he's not I dead because they're all legs. confused. <laughs> we, 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 we have limbs fully for the record. <laughs> like, let it, let it be just now. reacting to you uh, using present tense dead. I thought you were talking yes, about like an versus earlier past chapter. tense. We were... I was yeah. like, what do you mean? I was like, Hilo right now is alive <laughs> in chapter I'm ready. 15. Exactly I'm ready for happened. 17. She's ready to get to the end. Got you. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, we've got chapter 16 yeah. where we return to Shay as she made her way to the interior of the the interior mountains of the island of Kekon to inspect the KJA Jade Mine for Lon. As she explores, she's overwhelmed by the sensation of power while searching for any hints of the mountain's interference in its operations. Through her perspective, we are given a taste of her hate for Doru before we stumble upon or onto the question of why Gaunt Ash's signature would be on a page of a financial document for the and this is just this is such a rich chapter in so many ways. It explains some of the like literal earthen bits of the world. It gives a foundational myth for the first time of the whole story. There's so much that I love here. I just want to hear the thoughts of our gallery. This is my favorite I, chapter. Yeah, mine too. Uh, totally. Yeah. Totally. Absolutely. One hundred percent. This is my favorite chapter so far. <laughs> That's and this is like informing me like a lot of why I like Shay so much already. Like I just extremely interested in her story. Really want to see where her character goes and like I love kind of her being a little detective here and I hope that that vein continues where we get to her kind of getting deeper and deeper into a conspiracy that mm, she conspiracy can... Shay. <laughs> That's why we like her. <laughs> uh that she can Shadlin's son <laughs> that she can uncover and I don't know maybe that does end up pulling her back into the clan but I feel like maybe it's in a way that feels more right to us and that she's like pulling herself into it she wants to solve the the mystery she figures something out that needs her family needs to know and is using that information to like save them from some certain destruction or something like that. I, I'm not sure where this is going, but I like all of that kind of as a setup possibly for her. So she seemed to be enjoying yes, this sort of deep dive. Too. Definitely. Yeah. Like she needs, she needs a, she needs purpose and this is giving mm-hmm. her 
a purpose and then she's getting intrigued and then find she finds a clue it's not just like a boring nothing's happening and she's clearly like very good at it too. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah so she's my, an incredible accountant my commentary from earlier where i mentioned that lon was the one that like primarily was talking about not wanting to get shay dragged back into the to, to the family stuff and her not really expressing that that's this chapter that's why like that's why that's in my brain is because of this chapter where she like she's into it she's really yes. having a good time yeah. doing this and there's no like i no begrudgingly working on this stuff from her so like that's why that's why that commentary came that makes sense that makes a ton of sense in in post because she is enjoying this but i i don't think that she wanted to believe that this was clan work she was just doing what she's good well and she even said i'm just doing this as a favor to to her brother yeah Mm -hmm. like she makes a point this isn't for the clan it's a favor to you i thought it was really Mm -hmm. cool seeing the minds and how like even without wearing jade she couldn't go I thought that was awesome. Um, yeah. Like down in the mind. And then there's like a sign. Yeah. <laughs> Proximity. Yeah. Like attention. Caution. Yeah. If you are not Abu K. Yeah. Proceed no further. Yeah. That's, I, that's I really what the sign that. said. And then it was like, he's like, bitch, you read the sign. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I'm fine. How much she could feel that power. Just- I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, and she's that dude was so fucking pissed. You can go uh, watch his game. Yeah. He's missing the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> He missed. He missed his midweek relay ball. Game. Yeah, you know that's that's a problem for him. Well, he yeah, didn't though. Like he listened to it on the radio. Well, <laughs> it's, it's a very Thomas behavior <laughs> for sure. You're right. He didn't miss it the whole way through. But still, like the supervisor throughout the whole thing is a funnier character, and I enjoy his bit throughout the entire thing. But I also want to talk a second about the foundation myth that happens here that we get from this perspective, and I adore this as an idea of like we we have this new world this new universe and all of a sudden we're presented finally with a reason potentially for the green bones existing right and as it said in the old abuke myths she remembered kainla telling her as a child the first mother goddess nimura nimurana Nimuma. fell into the ocean and perished from exertion after creating the world her body became the island of Kaycon, and the veins of jade that ran under the mountains were her bones, her green bones. And that transition into this desolation <laughs> of this holy site yes. is so fucking crazy, <laughs> and you'd never see that in a regular fantasy. Yeah. Like, a traditional fantasy would never treat this like a resource. It's so cool to see an urban fantasy be like, we need to yeah, mine this shit mine up. This we need to make that shit like real right now, right now. But Grave he, diggers. Yeah. That what that juxtaposition right, was exactly. crazy. Oh, yeah. What this reminds Loved me it. of, like heavily, is Moana. That myth. Mm. Yeah. It's the whole yeah. like the volcano goddess person who's all angry, and then Moana comes and sings to her and brings her back to the heart of the ocean, and then she becomes this lush land. Mm-hmm. It's very Moana. It makes me think of the song too, of course. Did you want to sing? No. Okay. It's a great song though. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were. But... <laughs> Frost, is this so jarring for you because it is in a relatively modern setting? Because obviously, this mining has been going it's not on for centuries. I I don't want to say that it's jarring. I I just think that it's an interesting. It is the natural development of a society that knows that they have something magical, right? Or like they have something that is unobtainium esque, which is just this idea of like we can take something and we can utilize it and sell it and manipulate it across markets. But in the beginning, as it, so, like let's say we were in a classical fantasy setting. If you were setting this back then, I would imagine as like rural China. And they would be witnessing the green bones and those of whom are able to touch it might be able to fetch a couple of stones. They'd have some brief magic because they could hold those stones in their hands and they'd be crazy. We're now extracted generations from that point. And now we've hit a point of where mining it makes sense economically. And we're going to build that up and we're going to try to export it. We're going to create it into a good. And so we've, we've lost 
almost some of that initial magic of the whole system because we don't have a respect for the mythology in the same way. I think that's so cool about the way that this urban fantasy is developed. Mm, capitalism, just, baby. Well, yeah, it's also... Yeah, it's, it's capitalism <laughs> inside of... It's point. It's like, fuck you, Mistborn. Here's what a real system looks yeah. like. It's also pointedly not their mythology, though. It's the Abutai who are we see are clearly mm. presented as second-class citizens. Yes, because they're the origination point. So they're also the the natives of the environment. Yeah, and so the there's also Japanese are descended from the two. two. And they're mistreated. Yeah. So they're the real like settlers it, of the region. It's like it was an interesting bit of right. like real world stuff too. To, oh, it's so to, good. Yeah. You're 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 totally correct. The the tune versus the Kikinese slash, which is really the tune combination descendants with the abuke is what makes this whole story so fascinating because it becomes one of gene genealogy we could hop back six centuries and you could tell a really interesting story here but it wouldn't be the same one that we're getting now it would be so different it'd be divorce it'd be swords it'd be shields it would be fighting over like people believing in this whole ritual site of which they were able to like bow down before and then claim magic from there's just so much here that could that is rich for plundering but because we're modern we're mining it because that's what would happen it's very cool it does feel reminiscent of the rings of powers interpretation of the origin of mithril yes like that i wonder i wonder if there was a i don't know I wonder if that's connected in any way. It reminded me of real world when the Spanish invaded South America and the New World, where the you know, the indigenous Americans used gold not as a currency like the Spanish did, but as like a sacred religious artifact and temple and all relic. relic. Thank you. And they used I, I don't know the exact but like bluish beads, I believe was the equivalent of currency for them. Yeah, so it was correct. Yep. And so you have this outside power who's pillaging and views the, the the sacred thing as only a commodity but the sacred but thing also, also gives you magic powers yes there's that added layer right instead of currency it's magic and especially contrasted against chapter 14 this idea of like power being mined from the earth is its own problem and thing and that's what the jk is there to deal with is like they're like we can only take so much out and we also are like trying to preserve what the what the world has access to at this point. And so there's a fun economic balance there. Fun for me as an economist nerd and a society nerd and like all this shit. But I love this idea of there's only so much power out there. We can only mind her green bones for so long. There's only, there's only so many Jade warriors that could exist at a time until we get well, shine. Right, yeah, Cause you can, <laughs> well, but even then, they, they have that Jade. Jade. Yeah. And Jade. Yeah. Then you got to start killing people, stealing their bracelets. <laughs> yeah, By the way, sounds like a Jade on, War to me. On. By the way, PJ can it does doesn't it? <laughs> I can tell you that I Madashi's bracelets were silver, specifically silver. All right, not gold. Jeez. Not gold. It's crazy no. that I wasn't intentionally saying. <laughs> <laughs> I found it myself. <laughs> Cross. Good, appreciate good you work, good work <laughs> thank you the final point of this chapter that i want to bring up is the relationship that shay has with yoon dora upon mm. and this is what we've been talking about before with yoon and dora being like a massive issue of course and this is her closest friendship and this is what also led shay to leave the clan to begin with this sort of idea of this hierarchy of power pressing her naturally and like pressing down even though she was meant to succeed him and also having this sort of misogynistic manipulation that was happening from the top down and her grandfather agreeing with that deep, deep sin for Yoru, Doru. Yeah. Pervert, kill him. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Pervert, it, kill him. <laughs> it, was, it was a tough moment. For I'm sure. excited for Shay to fucking... I was clutching my pearls reading. <laughs> I just, I did not know. I was like, it's yikes. agreed. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I was. Yeah. How, how young was she at this point? Like seven, not that young. Oh, 13. She was that yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 13. 13. Yeah. 13. Yeah. She was teens. Yeah. 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 But still it's, I mean, that teens. doesn't change. <laughs> not yeah. right. Kill him stance, but I know. And yeah, the grandpa saying does. that 
well, you don't know what was done to him. It's like, well, we don't need to keep perpetuating violence. And that just shatters her world, her viewpoint of him. Like, well, and her grandfather w- raised her. Like, I know. she didn't know her dad. So it's no like, wonder she ran away with a Espanian, as you know. Espanian fuck boy. No, Espanian. No. We love you so dearly. The rest of us have listened to the audiobook. Espanian. Espanian. Sorry. Espanian. 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 I've been listening. I still. I'm but still yes, saying shit wrong. Like, reading yeah, it, it does so kind good. of so good. We'd go like, what'd you just say? They'll cross like Espanian, no, I, and then like because I always think Spanish influences for them, even though they're not really. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, we don't like Doru, and I hope that. Shay is the one to uncover his corruption. Oh, that would be nice, yeah. And I, get him killed. I don't think you're wrong in that that claim you made earlier that he killed Do. I don't think I don't Aaron, you said that earlier. Yeah, and I, I said Doru did you it. That. Yeah, I think I you think might be Doru honest on there. This isn't conspiracy. conspiracy. This triangle. is No, this is uh I'm clairvo- like I'm clairvoyant. I know. <laughs> I just know. Welcome back to the corner. Clarin. <laughs> <laughs> we love that. We stand that actively. Here's a question. Do we think Shay told anyone besides her grandfather about what Doru was up to? I don't think Lon knows. I would say I hope he doesn't know. That's going to would he really keep him around? That's going to really hurt my feelings if what, Lon knows and didn't what else do would about it. <laughs> be his source of like hatred towards him though. Like he like Lon, Hilo and Shay all separately really fucking hate Doru and like think of him as a gross old man. Hmm. Like what else could that be from? Yeah. And I mean like I I I understandably maybe it's just general generally the way that he carries himself that like has shown him to be this person without that knowledge but i'm on i don't know i'm on i don't think she told anybody yeah no i think hilo yeah. would have killed him or tried to no oh, that's a good point and i don't think i don't think lon would have put up for with him for as long as he did or for any amount of time in general yeah if that had happened, there's an interesting bit in one of the chapters we covered last week where Lon notices that he has a difficult time keeping secretaries and that they seem mm. to be getting younger and younger. Notices that so mm. allows him to like, see through and even see her bra, basically. So, oh, mm. now I remember that. It's interesting. Like, is it interesting or is it fucking creepy, right. Thomas? It's, well, it's like, so if he does know, like... Yeah, if he knew he would be able to connect does, those dots he at that would, point. He, would, like, yeah. he wouldn't mean? even make commentary of it. Yeah. Like that. Thomas and I were stuck on whether or not we talked yeah. about this at all last <laughs> week. And we were like, nope, we'll see if they pick it up. <laughs> we, it was one of those moments <laughs> where Thomas and I were figuring this out. And yeah. I do remember thinking about that in the moment when I was reading yeah. it, but it just didn't stick in my head. And I kind of, I mean, so. I originally saw Doru more as like, not to bring up Red Rising every five seconds, but as more of like a white, like a asexual. Mm. I didn't, I didn't see him as first as, you know, he was just like a perv. A, no, I didn't. no, originally. I, no, you didn't see him as a perv. I didn't see him as a perv, right. No. I didn't see him as a, him as, as, as the, you know, gay or straight or, you know, I saw him as just like, all he is is a scheming political person. So initially I thought of him as the guy of whom is the one of the, I think it's James Hong who plays Shi Fu in Mulan, like that advisor yes. and has like hat, that's the, how like, I, narrow hat the mustache. I thought. That was my picture of Doru, and he even is almost played very similarly, and he's like almost mush, mustache twirly, and then he's a pervert, and you're like, oh my fucking yeah, god. He is very so now he's like the sultan from Aladdin. Yes. He's got the kinda. pervy mustache. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. For sure. Or no, it's a my goatee. Boy, All he wants to do is sure. feed 
Proctor's too. <laughs> What's his name? Yada Yada. Bird. Yeah, that's not all he wants to do. He wants to put Jasmine, his niece. Da- Anyways, daughter. Well, that was his daughter. Yeah. No, Jafar. I'm trying to say Jafar. Uh, no, Jafar. 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 You were saying the Sultan. Sultan. The Sultan is also fucked yeah. up for the record. But why yeah. is the he just He's wanted to marry his daughter. Fat little happy man. He was being mind controlled into marrying his daughter. With the snake cane. The Arabian Nights, no, we're not talking about There's that. no mind control. We're not talking about <laughs> I know, but I am. Talking I was always Disney talking about but Jafar. But I am. For the record. You were talking about Jafar. With Your the, go- the black goatee. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it is interesting to me like how obviously wicked Doru is and that he's associated mm. with and that they're keeping him around. Yeah, like that part. Some of that's not driving for this me is, as much. But this is so interesting for me. And I, I really want to peel back Thomas's opinion on this. Did you feel like in our reads that Dory was that high? Is is it is it a problem with the format that they're like they're obsessed yeah, with? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> because like when you're yeah. binge reading. God damn it. <laughs> so I feel like I probably got to chapter sixteen and like the second or third yeah. setting at most when I was reading it, so probably like a day after I started reading. So it's not like you're not sitting on things and thinking about them and ruminating right. them so much. Mm-hmm. So I do think. I mean, I do come into this like I'm looking for stuff. So yeah, yeah. I, I think I, just I, as the I way you, you started in the corner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is interesting, but I it's a morbid curiosity for me. There are several things that I'm like, especially on a reread. It was like, this is so obvious. I'm an idiot. I know, I know for a fact that I approach these books that we do on the show like very differently from like if I were just read, which I don't do often. The short pours versus the standard reads, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like I, I know I approach them differently. I know I scrutinize everything a lot more. So, i it's hard to. Yeah, I feel like I'm usually just chilling when I read because I don't want to build up a narrative in my head and then not meet it and then it's like messed up so i just while i'm reading i am team no hype to myself while reading but there are times when like i'm reading something i figure it out and it doesn't impact it at all i'm just like you know i like being right i'm smart uh but in general i think i'm just like a vibes reader so it is this format. me too thomas i'm a vibes reader me and thomas feeling the vibes abercrombie is the best now we are at chapter 17. Night at the Lilac Divine. Ooh, We're sexy. Mind- <laughs> <laughs> We're keeping all of it yes. in. Lon pays a visit to the Lilac Divine Gentleman's Club. Though he has gone there for an escape, the recent troubles facing the clan and Shay's unraveling of some of the mountain's actions at the Jade Mines weigh on him very heavily. After enjoying Psalm's and sets with Uni, a charm girl. He is woken from his poised. Oh, he's a he is awoken from his post coital nap with news that the mountain has whispered Hilo's name. Wait, and not <laughs> just whispered. He's awoken with bloody make tar. Ma- make tar. I just want to say Mike because of the way it's spelled. It's spelled like Mike, Same. though. It's spelled like saying. Mike to me. <laughs> I, 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 how did you spell Mike? You said you called up the Mike, though. Mike. It's like Mike. It's Mike. <laughs> My hot and heavy, but I like this sex scene a lot better than the first one. Really? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And we're getting a time passage here. Like we've got like a solid month has passed since the last chapter. What? Since since Shay was in the mine. Okay. Oh really? Yeah. But th- there's there's at least it in in between chapters. It's like a time jump. Yeah. There's a bit of a time jump. Do they talk between, about it? Vista. Uh, Fourteen. It's part of the chapter. Sorry. Yeah. It's, yeah, it totally is. Okay. Basically, we've seen within this week about two weeks transpire. Okay, yeah. Ish. Plus, a, sorry, two weeks and then a month. So it's right. six weeks. Okay. Yeah. This like this seems like it's like a month later. That's, that, that was kind of what yes. I got. Yeah. From chapter yep. 16. Yeah. Yep. But it's processing. Like I said earlier, it seems pretty fucking stupid to go to a whorehouse without bodyguards and then take off all of your jade and put it in a safe. Can All right. I totally agree with you. I think that, I'm sorry, that's you're the pillar. Idea. But at the same time, 
can you not feel the idea of like being want to be rid of your power fantasy? Okay, and, like, bring being, your like, bodyguards. Devoid of Jesus, that idea? <laughs> put him um, in the hallway. It's insane. He's at one of his establishments, basically. Though it's so. insane. Yeah, right. There's also Anyways. though unique says she's practically a stone eye. There's the implication that she could be impacted if he wore the full weight of his jade, presumably. Yeah. Oh, that's true too. Like, can you have sex with somebody that has jade on them if you're not a stone eye? Don't know if we know. But I think he says could that be he fun. one as soon as you could. That's, yeah, he does. That's a good point. I mean, you could have sex with anyone provided they're a willing participant, yes. but, like, that's. <laughs> I mean, consent, Christ. That Jade, so, so Jade <laughs> enhances. Thank you. Jade enhances senses. So taking off your Jade is effectively putting on a condom. That's I had that exact same thought, PJ. I swear to God, <laughs> it's a power no, condom. It's, it's, it's not a real. No, it's condom. like the opposite of taking ecstasy to have <laughs> sex. Like, it's like, un, on, like it's like negative stuff. ecstasy. Kinda more than wearing a condom. <laughs> So we gotta figure this, this out. This is Jay. so interesting. I we 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 need we need to talk about this as a group. So I'm gonna give it to Aaron first, <laughs> okay. and we'll go to Ben, PJ, and we'll go around. <laughs> ben, you have a lot side. to say. About I, the sex I didn't scene. get that idea from it. Well, I agreed with PJ that it's like putting on a condom, but then I was saying it's like it's the opposite of taking ecstasy or Molly or something to have sex. You're like you're lessening the experience by taking away your senses. I thought I interpreted it as his senses are so heightened that taking it off allowed him to kind of relax Last longer. and <laughs> no, like relax and like go with the flow and, and enjoy it more and shockingly Ben and I are get <laughs> less okay. get out of his head more fourth time. this episode. Yeah, I think P- PJ, PJ and I are aligned you and Ben cross and Ben are aligned and then Thomas is here and he I was able to enjoy it to more as a result. Thoughts. So, we, so yeah. I, yeah, right. based on the way they've described Jade, it feels like, it's a perpetual tin enhancement to, to bring it towards. No, it's not. Everyone knows that. So I know. Okay. So it, it essentially feels like they are always at heightened senses in feeling, in perception, in speed senses, like senses in general are heightened. So like when you take that away, everything is dull comparatively. And like, they're so used to having their jade on them. They've become used to it. That's their normal. That's their baseline. So like they are operating at a deficit of feeling. That's where I was going with it. That was not necessarily my, like they talk about the weight of jade and like, like the, the wearer, even though they have all these heightened senses, like that can be difficult. It like puts you on edge. If you wear too much jade, then you're like, like you've had too much caffeine kind of type thing going on. And so him taking it off allowed him to like relax and then be less in his head, be less aware and kind of go with the flow of of the, of the sexy time (laughs) is kind of how I saw that. Open himself up for assassination. (laughs) No big deal. All right. I, we have to give Thomas time on the clock. So I came down more on the side of, Cross and PJ, where I thought it was almost like, I mean, he says it's like having sex with the lights off or in a dark room, right? So it's just a dampening and yeah. allows him to be in the moment. Thomas, that's less- that's me and that's Cross and Ben, and then me and PJ yeah. are on the yeah, side. Right, you right. picked the wrong. But, you, you but split PJ up the and sides. I have similar parallels. We just <laughs> didn't agree on the the immediate focus of the moment, character wise. You're right, though. Just pick the right corner. All right. So Ben and I believe emotionally <laughs> and and it and reactionally, sensorily, he's trying to deprive himself in some ways and make himself more normal. And Aaron and PJ have predominantly been talking about the fact that it might be something else. There, it's like a, a devaluing of senses. Uh, I I don't think that's the intention. I, okay. I think right. the intention is to protect her from. Contact with oh. Jade. I didn't because get, she's not a stone. I didn't get that. Like, I, I I think that like that's the intention. I didn't because, get that sense. Like, 
I disagree with PJ. I'm in my own corner. I have a sense <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I think. Well, how do you feel? It's I don't think right I can there. say it for reasons. But Hilo and the make pull pull feel sister. The what's, what's the feeling? She's moment? immune. Right. Pull Is Uni right. not so a Sonai? She not a Sonai. She says she's practically one, but we don't know. What's practically exactly. mean? Yeah. In the context. Maybe Lon is just trying to last longer and lowering his sense itself. It's not worth this time. But he's also not at the same time. Like that's that's he the came whole thing. More like, quickly, weren't you reading? He, <laughs> yeah, than he wanted to him, than he thought he would. He's pulling himself down in a way. It's it's just this whole thing of where like I, I think there there's this other side of the story, which is that Lon wishes to be a normal person. And that is so crazy on the surface level of the position that he's in where he has all this power. And you always want what you especially can't have. in this scene is when it becomes omnipresent almost. I, I've listened to this chapter four times today. Not for all the you know, like cool <laughs> and whatever wow, the fuck. Okay. I listened to it four. And boy are my arms tied. <laughs> <Dude, so. laughs> left and um, right, left, right. Two times, huh? Wow. It's a whole thing. Switch. Yeah, I mean, You've been busy. You know, four four times. times. Yeah. <laughs> I had a lot of time the day after my birthday. Oh my but God. You must be worn out. Stamina. The core point being, though, that there's a lot of emotionality to this moment of like choosing to open yourself up to something and like removing your power from the situation and trying to like meet someone where they are. And even if it's, especially if it's someone who's a sex, work, sex worker, like it's, you just want to have that experience and own the whole thing front to back and feel it really. And I think if no one else, Lon wants to feel that in the moment. That's why he's here. <laughs> At least we know which chapters you're listening to over and over again. <laughs> I, <laughs> he makes a, a great, beautiful point and you just make a I mean, masturbation an joke. Point. <laughs> it's, it's an amazing <laughs> porn joke. <laughs> You made a very poignant point, very pretty. God damn. I would ask two questions God to the group it. based on that. I think. Do we think I'm gonna ask them both now so that when we get distracted, they're both on the record. Do we think Lon wants to be a normal person or just a lower ranking green bone, perhaps? And then got the other one. Oh, I feel like he came to the Lilac Divine for that sense of normalcy, more so than anything else i think lon is trying to relax he's going to the massage parlor gets a great massage that involves a happy ending and And he's just trying to relax i don't think i don't see it as him trying to be normal or a lesser green bone i see it as him like he has the weight of the world on his shoulders he's just trying to have a fucking night out to relax Mm. And possibly get murdered without bodyguards or his jade. I definitely think that Lon, if gi- if given, if he thinks, if he could, I think he would give up being a green bone. And that's part of why he respects Shay so much and is like, okay with the decision that she made. And yeah, I do think he wants to be a, he seems to struggle with just like awareness, not only like his heightened awareness of his green bone senses and his jade senses or whatever, but his just like self-awareness and like his awareness of where he's at, what's required of him and his role. Like he just struggles with everything that's kind of being asked of him. And he's like, I don't want this. That's the vibe I get from Juan a lot of the time. He just wants a nap because he can't sleep (laughs) because of the crickets and the mice. I think he would choose to give up his, his jade abilities altogether in the opportunity i don't know if that's his motivation here i don't i don't know if it's truly connected this is a means of going out and and taking his mind off things for a little while i know i've been kind of shit posting on like the, the reason behind why he took off his jade i i think there could probably be a multitude of reasons probably most of them are true i think he's wanting to just feel like a normal person i think he wants to protect the person that he's with i think he uh, i mean those are the two main ones right and it's just like 
this is kind of a sad scene for him. Like he's thinking about his wife a lot of the time. <laughs> like yeah. not the best. Like until Uni gets her hands between his thighs. I mean that he does think about his. No, wife. then he's like, and then he forget, he, yeah, he quickly forgets. Right, but that sadness. Even though, like, he dissolves. Yeah, you know? like part of yeah. that, like I think, is like taking the jade off and like not having to think about some of that stuff and just like he's sad about his wife and soft. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think at its core, this yeah. is a deeply heartbreaking chapter because his life is so transactional that he has to pay not just like for sets, but for the comfort of company. Right. And he knows that it's Reality like reality yeah. in some degrees. And it's also sort of the idea That's of right. intimacy. Mm-hmm. He's sharing walls with people. Like if he's got his jade on, he can he can feel everyone around him. That must be to a certain and he, degree. And they're kind of near the end. He can't, like he talks about like how he knows that this girl's like faking it and like but she's like really good at it and he appreciates that she's like putting in that effort and like making him feel that intimacy and care. But on a level, he's like he understands that I'm paying for this and this is kind of like a sad deal. So yeah, it just makes me feel bad for him. I don't feel bad for him. He got his rocks off. Mm. <laughs> Good for you. That's fair. fair. Real weird in a green bone brothel with all the perception going on. <laughs> they probably have ways to deflect. Oh. I bet Lon got walls. his whole. Lon, he had a private house. performance. I'm sure they like empty the place out for him. Maybe if we're done with oh man the intricacies of Lon Lon's uh, night out. What do we make of the mountain whispering Hilo's name? Baron, is he dead? <laughs> well, I thought so until these fuckers started acting all suspicious. <laughs> do, do, we not believe, do, you believe, do you not believe? I don't we didn't think, understand what you were saying, truly. I don't think this person killed Hilo and immediately went and told Lon about it. I think this person well, killed the tar, messenger. Definitely I'm not, not saying kill make killed Hilo. him. <laughs> Make Ken. Is it make Ken? Yeah. I'm just, I'm looking make at Ken. it. Yeah. I remember. I think he heard Hilo's name whispered. He's covered and in blood. Said it. That guy, whoever said it from the mountain clan. Oh, you think, think Hilo's he, fine? I think he killed what, the messenger. Why would he come? Why wouldn't he go to Hilo then? Why would he go to Lon at the whorehouse covered in blood? Because that's a good question. I think he, Alon, he only went he, to, I, think he, he, I think he knows he, that Lon is the one that actually has the opportunity to do anything about it in a meaningful way and get them to like call off that whisper. As I the don't pillar. know. I think something like, happened. I don't think Hilo something would have happened could to, do anything about it. Something had to have happened to Hilo to make make any of the makes go to Lon because they're like Ben said, they're the bitch boys. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah I think maybe he's injured not dead at this point and so yeah that's a possibility too something yeah. happened okay. to Hilo is what I'm saying I do think he, he's been harmed I think he's fucked up yeah if my mate Ken is covered in blood that's not his own right specifically and like his general vibe when he showed up he seemed very like fuck yeah very fu- fuck dude <laughs> like fuck dude <laughs> They fucking whispered his name, bro. <laughs> That's the kind of general vibe I got from that he's a bitch boy. situation. So it seems like something bad has happened to Hilo. Whether he's dead or not, I don't know. Sure. I would do say we think it was, I lean towards no. But it would be a good twist if he is dead. Do we think it was actually the mountain? Or do we think it was the gang that he fucked with? Hmm. Maybe, uh, maybe it was. I feel uh, like the mountain's strong enough that it'd be hard to... F- Fake that. What if it was Barrow? You know? So like PJ are you suggesting <laughs> or like Barrow Barrow? More dangerous to fake it than yeah. I don't know, than what? But it just to, be very to fake a whisper campaign. Yeah. That feels also, difficult. Yeah. Also, Ben, were you suggesting that it was Barrow in the middle there? He goes, What if it was Barrow? Yeah, what if you had some involve involvement? That would be pretty ambitious and how did he jump to that level well, I mean, he's of probably, power? He's got, he's got a help at the, he would have to get help at that point from mo- six mo- weeks. I mean, yeah. like between the A and B, but I'm just saying, yeah, well, Barrow must be dead then. Cause how is he going to fuck 
well, he that could be his blood. Like he could have showed up, tried to kill Hilo, and then he got got by the makes. And I could get behind that. I don't think Make Ken would show up to the whorehouse and interrupt Lon if that was Barrow's blood. It has to be Hilo's blood, whether he's alive or dead. Fair. This is a game of Clue, and or the Mountain did it. Did. Did you go? I'm sorry, PJ. Did you go down this road already? Of is this a make setup? Are like the makes up to shit? Are uh, are we like no, setting up lawn for path. a trap right now? Are they showing up covered in blood? Saying, like, come with me. Come with us. Like every Hilo's two chapters for Darrow. Come, yeah. come with me. And then Rogue fell down a cliff. Exactly. And then it's it's Rogue died. <laughs> yeah. And then it's a yeah. it's a yeah. uh, trap for for lawn taking advantage of this point where he's just come out of like not Putting wearing his jade, his jade. Back on. now he's got his jade back on he's maybe not thinking straight I don't know I don't know maybe the makes are up to some stuff I think Hilo's dead there's no plot armor everyone dies Ooh. I would kind of like it I, I would like it a good, like a Hilo death here just because that's going to be like First of all, that raises the stakes of this book like a crazy amount right away. And then that is a big problem for Lon like, yeah. to solve. And I don't know how he's going to deal with that. He so doesn't that would have be a, a wound Poppy Danwa in line for <laughs> yeah. the horn. Mm. Yeah. So I would be on board with that if that's the way we're going with the story. But it, I don't know. I don't think I think Hilo's still alive. So if Feels anyone like has listened to Words and Whiskey before, we know that I take down high-level bets like Aaron's bet in this moment. <laughs> so this is a bet, Aaron, for a drink later. Done. Just made. <laughs> Ready. Unwittingly. Ready. <laughs> so it's, it, we'll pay it off when it happens. I or pay if it my debts. Happen. Who, who so, okay. <laughs> what are the sides of the bet? So Aaron drinks if she's wrong? Aaron? Ar- no, we all okay. drink. Well, the host drink. You and I. Thomas, okay. Sorry, Thomas. Are agreeing to drink if Aaron is wrong. If she's wrong, we drink. The bet is I don't, if, no, she's if she's right. right. Sorry, if she's right, we drink. If she's wrong, she drinks. Sorry. Either way, I so, drink. <laughs> and I, I drink to that. I'll drink to that. I think I like the. <laughs> well, we're pre-drinking, but yes. <laughs> what if, uh, we could do a sort of? We're not going to new- do matrix newbies. right now. No, no, but j- newbies versus like veterans. Yeah. Thing <laughs> we're we're where all on different one sides. Though, from PG. our side, drinks and well, one right. person. It's, it's the conspiracy corner <laughs> versus the experience the quadrant. <laughs> it doesn't mean that <laughs> <conspiracy> everybody <laughs> has to <laughs> drink men in black. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys are our men in black around I here. I like being the men in black. I hate it. With that <laughs> PJ. To your point, if I call out Aaron. I'll take the drink specifically versus yeah. if yeah. All right. Okay. You and me cross. So, Hilo is dead. Nice. Shake on it. When soon? No, he's already dead. Okay. He's currently dead. I'm taking that bet. to my boy. Tough. All right. Anyone else want to make a bet? Anything else on chapter 17 before we get into closing thoughts and bets of which we will now be posing <laughs> at the end of each episode. We, we're, episode we're in a bit now we've got a new bit i'm so excited well i mean if if people have bets every episode but closing thoughts. this oh. this set of chapters had so much meat to it and you know again the world is expanding we know more about the government we know more about each character I'm like starting to care about certain characters. Starting to get frustrated with the the pace of the reading just because like I'm ready to like <laughs> bust this shit out. Yeah. Thomas. <laughs> 70 pages a week isn't, isn't enough? No, I'm no, so sorry. Yeah, it's it's going to only get faster. Yeah. No, it's I'm not I'm just saying like the it's it's good and I want to I want to, to just keep like going, yeah. kind of bust it out and every time That's- we get to a point where I need to stop. I'm like, shit. Sure. It's always a little cliffhanger. Yeah. Closing question for you, beautiful, beautiful co host. Babies. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> a beautiful baby. <laughs> a beautiful baby. You don't even know it. <laughs> You're so your fucking money. money. Baby, that's what this, anyway, there's been a lot of discussion. Kilo good at gangster shit. Some of our heroes accused of being gangsters. If they are, 
do you feel guilty rooting for them? Do you feel able to root for them? Or is there some sort of inherent baggage with that that would prevent you from being wholly on their side? I mean, I'm I'm always going to, and I, I wanted to bring it up earlier. I can't remember if I did or not, but just the idea of like, who's the good, who are the good guys in this story? I don't care if we're rooting for the bad guys, rooting for the gangsters. I'm fine with it. I'll still have fun with the story. Yeah. I'm okay That's with it. I, with I mean, it. I'm not going to be like cheering on Hilo just ever. Probably. I don't know. Maybe we'll see. He could, he could, he could do some stuff to make me feel better about him. But like Lon, I feel like even though he's a gangster, he's got a deep sense of honor about him that I really respect. And like a sadness kind of about what he's doing. And so that I don't see me, Lon as a gangster. That makes me like him. Yeah. And and then the other person that I'm really rooting for is Shay, and she's someone who's kind of like pushing against it. So and then we'll see what happens with Andon, but he seems like a, a character that is just kind of bright eyed, naive, and we'll see what kind of like terrible, difficult decisions he has to make later on and and how he deals with that, if he does. And I think that will inform how I feel about his character. Well, I'm rooting for the mountains, so I'm clearly <laughs> not feeling she's guilty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so here to win. Evil. She's just a Mata, uh, what is it? Mata, Mata Madam. Mata Madam. <laughs> Mata Madam. I'm just here to win, and I'm picking the winning team. Wow. All bets are off, except for the bet I made with Cross. I'm going to say if we're not following right. them throughout every chapter, they're probably not the winning team. You don't know, okay. Fonda. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the whole story will flip at some point. Have you met Fonda? That was part of Conspiracy Corner in, in episode one. So, True. Yeah. I, I, maybe, so maybe if that happens, I get Yeah, credit. maybe the calls are the bad guys. <laughs> so no, I don't feel guilty. And, you know, everyone likes gangster, everyone likes, you know, mafia movies and stuff. Like, you're already... As long as I can see, like, human characters, like, it doesn't really matter, like, what their job is. And and there are, like, I have a harder time seeing it with, like, Hilo seeing, like, the human aspect qualities of him. But, like, um, but I'm they're sure they're there. there. Yeah, yeah, they're there. There's, like, his love for his family. And for Andon. And for Andon and stuff like that. So, like, that helps me empathize with them. And then especially you can see it with like Lon and Shay and those types of characters. So like, even if they do a bad thing or have a bad job, you can still see them as a human. And that's just a, when they're well-written characters like that. So that it doesn't matter kind of what's going on at that point. Like I have a hard time with people being like, well, everybody in this sucks, you know, they're all bad guys. And well, it's like, they're still within that storytelling human yeah, humans yeah. and so it doesn't mean that you can't empathize with them still those people would never love joe abercrombie yeah it's like all of them are flawed. i mean one of my favorite characters yeah, i'm, ro- I'm rooting for all of the first law characters <laughs> yeah. my literal favorite character of all time is jamie lannister and he is fucking his sister right. <laughs> and <laughs> and Scum he, throws, he, throws a, he throws a child out the window <laughs> yes and he throws a child out a window so but like that's literally one of my favorite characters ever so i didn't know that oh my god you're oh, terrible yeah. <laughs> it's disgusting so excited for the rest of the series to unfold so we learn so much more about each other <laughs> <laughs> so cool. me like too good <laughs> Thomas with your little angel halo. Sanderson. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. I love it too. So with that, I want to give space. Anything else that anyone wanted to say about the book this week so far? I'm excited for more. Cool. I feel like we've been pretty, pretty good about making sure we hit all the points. So I'm feeling good about it. Just making sure. Dude, got to double check. Right. But with that, next week, we are going to be reading chapters, the first interlude through 25. So 18.5 or whatever you want to call it. The first interlude through chapter 25. So that's where we'll leave you for this week. Thank you, as always, to our producers, Tim and Andrew, for helping us keep our show's lights on. Also, check out the links in the show notes where you can find our schedule our patreon our previous episodes our websites our social media 
accounts all in one very nice, easy location. And to everyone else, of course, of whom is a part of the show, you can find Heike Obsessed, you can find Hellerbod, and Atomic Pylon Media instead of those links as well. In case you're looking for them, Words Whiskey Pod on Twitter, Instagram, and Reddit, Words and Whiskey Show at gmail.com, patreon.com forward slash words and whiskey, and t shirts on T Public. Aaron, do you wanna do you wanna lay out yeah, lay out the, the review. Na- the names threshold. that you would whisper. If uh, oh yeah, and please rate and review us five stars only. If you don't give us five stars only, then we will send angry little bitch boy Barrow after you, <laughs> and it he'll slash your tires. <laughs> he will slash your tires <laughs> at a minimum, <laughs> and you'll get fired. <laughs> you and not. then you can't you feed not. yourself. <laughs> so better do five stars. <laughs> Five stars only. Thank you all so much for showing up at the show. We we adore it. We're so glad that everyone is here. The first episode reaction was so fucking cool. We're recording this on the same day. It was wild. Got so many good good messages across the board. So it's very exciting. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Very fun. Thank you guys. See you next week. So until okay, next bye. time, remember. Gold and Jade. <laughs> we need like a closing. You just Gold and Jade. Aaron a thief. Thief. Thief always. Thief.